Hey, it's your boy, Jesus Nice. That's right, I'm the kid, Meryl, and we are here doing what? You know what I'm saying? We're watching a little baseball. We usually aren't going by the Bodega Boys, but today we are the Baseball Boys, as That's we right. are coming together right now to watch a classic baseball game, Red Sox versus the Yankees. And you know what? We might have some special guests. 2012. It's a mystery 12. game. It's Tune mystery in. Game. You know what I mean? We got right. some, like, see, like my guy said, we got some special guests. You don't There's know who guests. they are, but you're going right. to love it. Because there's no baseball right now, but you know what? You can watch an old game with us, and we're adding new commentary to it. So it's like new. You know, so, you it's, know. A, it's like, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a, think of it as a director's cut. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, ooh. You wow. know what I'm saying? Can we get an Emmy for this? Uh, Absolutely. I mean, no, I, uh, I was just told by MLB we can't. So anyway, oh, no. watch the game and enjoy. Come with us. Grab a Frank, grab a beer or a soda. You know what I'm saying? Let's make it happen, guys. Okay, a beautiful day in Fenway. All right, aka the Mad Circle Sox. of Hell. That's right. All right, let's look at the starting lineup. We got Jeter, Swisher, Cano, Rodriguez, uh -huh. Teixeira, Grandison, Jones, Martin, Nunes. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Eduardo. All right, Dominicano. <laughs> and we got Grandison, the black guy. That's so right. Out. And Jeter. Curtis. This was a Curtis. great Yankee lineup. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Strong remember, lineup. I remember talking so much trash with this lineup. Oh. Nick Swisher is my favorite, one of, probably one of my favorites because oh, yeah, he always Nick. had the wild dip in his dip. In his mm -hmm. All right. He was very... Du Bronx. Du Bronx? Dominicano? Is, <laughs> is he? I'm, I mean, I'm not going to claim him because he's a Red Sox. Okay. <laughs> hey, yeah, Jeet. Hey! Yeah, Jeet. Derek Jeet. Hey, let's Jeter. go, Jeter. Yeah, Let's go. Jeter. Yeah. Look at that average. Look at that Look at average. That. All right. And this is back when he was running the streets. It's wild. Okay. Not married uh -huh. yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Jeets. All right. Beautiful Let's Fenway go. Park. All right. Yeah, it's sunny cool. day. Let's see. You, could, you could smell the beans in the air. Like, oh, yeah. yeah All right. First Look pitch. at the distance, man. Let's go. Up. All right. Uh, Fouls. Fouls it off. Okay. Fouls All right. Off. No big deal. All right. This is a typical Red Sox Yankee game. After every pitch, you must step out of the box for five minutes. Absolutely no uh -huh. reason why, you know? There's a great shot, of, great shot of Bobby Valentine right there, not Bobby wearing a Valentine. fake mustache. Not related to Bobby Valentino, who is a very popular R&B singer. That's right. right. Outside, that's outside. That's, that's way outside, it's a big strike. It's a big strike. Uh, at this point, I wouldn't even be at the gate yet. I'd still be getting concessions, you know? All right. Uh, there we go. Foul. Uh, foul stays alive. Staying alive. All right, Mr. 3000. Guaranteed right. 79 games. Uh huh. Look, look at that. 342 average, average 50 ribbies. Mm -hmm. Okay, 388 on base percentage. That's right. Healthy. That's right. Healthy. And you know what? What's that they love? 100% winner. Okay, yeah, Jeeps. That's Play right. the game the right way. The captain. The cap captain, my captain. Uh huh. All right. I don't know what this guy's doing with this weird rope around his neck. It's become in vogue in the major leagues. Remember, that used to be does. the big thing. They said it, it made yeah. you a better pitcher. But Jabba Chamberlain wore it in some of his opening yeah. games. And he, oh, Jeter. Hey, Hits a single. There yeah. There we'll we go. Take that. All right. Base knock. That's what base you knock. want from your leadoff guy. A nice right. base knock. Get on base. Set the other guys up. You got to, go. you know, position to position hitting. All right, let's check out the defense. We got Darnell McDonald, Cody oh, Ross, Ryan right. Sweeney, Kevin Euclid, boo. Uh, Mike Harris, out of here. Dustin Pedroia, boo. Ooh. Adrian Ooh. Gonzalez. And Jared Sotolamakia. You know what? I always liked his name because he had a lot of vowels in it. Yeah, it almost didn't fit on his jersey. Now, shout out to Nick Swisher. I hung with him right. in the uh, Red Sox Yankee London game last year. He's mad fun. He's one of the coolest yeah. dudes ever. And I and felt like bad I said, for slandering him for disappearing in the playoffs. We, we take that all back. We but take that all back. We take all Once back. again, at the plate with the dip. That's right. Pack lip. Like and a check out that sideburn. Player. Check out that That's sideburn. a baseball sideburn right there. That's a baseball sideburn, baby. That's a, I grew up in Florida, and I played baseball my whole life sideburn. With, or, with oranges at one point. <laughs> I would like to point out the flex of people having a uh, front, like, dugout, like, Front row seats at Yankee. Mm -hmm. uh, right Park. behind the no, plate. Not even there. Not even there. They're out, Yankee they're probably... socks. You got behind home plate seats and you're giving them up. Mm -mm. You know what? They're probably out on their yacht in Cape Cod. True. Fishing. Oh. Uh, come on, Swish. 
He's Come small. on, Swish. All right. It's early. Did Swish run it out? Did Swish, did Swish run hard to first? Let's see. Let's check on the replay. So Jeter don't. <laughs> Derek Jeter slid <laughs> two steps into his launch from first base. He slides into the second. You got to love it. Here we go. Robinson Cano. Hey. Robinson Cano. Hey. Right, he was struggling at this point in the season. He only has one home he, run. He was, but I'll tell you this. The, we're going to watch this at bat very carefully because nobody has discipline at the plate like Robbie Cano. Let's go. Let's check it All out. Right. Let's see if this is true. All right. Mm -hmm. Inside. And like a true Dominican, he sells every pitch. Like, oh, Papa, you almost hit me in the thigh. Oh, my God. You know, some people would say selling pitches is lying. But, you know, you whatever say? word you want to use. I call it gamesmanship. Gamesmanship? <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah, whoa, no, that was way inside. What are you doing? It was way inside. It wasn't that close to him, all right? Like, <laughs> That's what you're going to do. I'm getting big days of our lives energy right now. <laughs> I love it. Also, also, Ginger, is it bad sportsmanship to step into a pitch? Like, I mean, just take it, bro. It's cold taking one for the team, you know? Yeah, I mean, oh. look, he just he fouled it against his leg, so you can just, just take one for the team. Yeah. Bro. All right, no big deal. Keys to the game. Oof. Ian Noah, even I Ivan Nova Nova needs, Nova needs, needs help. Needs help. <laughs> That's true. He still does. That's true. This <laughs> is true. Still does. Oh. <laughs> I forgot. I watched that uh, playoff game that he. Oh God! Don't even. You're not even. Yeah, yeah. Let's not talk about it. That's all that's right. Triggering. Two one right, pitch. Two one. Let's go. Whoop! Whoop! Laid off on too that high. One. Three one. It's, uh, see, look at that discipline. All right. Is he gonna take this pitch or he's swinging? What do you what do you what do you see? He's swinging. He's swinging on this one. He's gonna. He's either gonna foul it off if he, if he doesn't like it, or he's or he's gonna smack a nice little double. Into the gap. Ooh. Okay, Whoa. he doesn't have to do that. Take your base. And he is heading to first. <laughs> All right. You got runners on first and second. Two Let's outs. Let's go. Oh, who is it? It's the guy. The highlight hey, guy. My hey, highlights, hey, I mean sports highlight and hair highlights. A-Rod. That's right. And this is back before he was with J-Lo. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. He knew. He told umpire. He's like, one day I'm going to be with Jennifer Lopez. They're like, all right, sir, take your base. Two outs, runners on first. Let's go, A-Rod. All right. This I is what you get up. paid the big bucks for, my guy. Come on, A-Rod. Come on. All right. Run! And the Run. runners advance. <laughs> the runners advance. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh. Salmachia. Yeah. How do you feel about that? A little salty? That's got to be embarrassing. If, like, your whole job is to catch. I mean, the actual name of your position is catcher. Catcher. One job, my catch. guy. Let's get, just catch okay. it. Just catch it. Just gotta catch it. All right, A Rod. Oh, A Rod got on the sunglasses that you put on your creative character. Yeah, uh -huh. bro. Yep. Yeah. He's serious. He's locked in. Uh huh. Wow. He knew it too. This guy's a machine. Oh, for four. Oh, All right, okay. But you know what? Those graphics are great because. Right after a graphic like that is when he that's when you hit a home thousand run. feet. You know it. Oh, big text on deck. Mark to Shira. Mark more the terror. Uh, okay. Oh. 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 And got it. Oh, oh boy. Three All up, right. three down. Okay. All right. First inning. Let's get warmed up. Let's get warmed up. If I was at the bar, I ordered another beer. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, would you like a water? I'm like, no, I did not ask for water. I said no, another beer. I, I, I okay. Beer, sir. All right. If you ask me for water again, I'm going to ruin this establishment. While we're a here. A general general rule of thumb. If it's a one, two, three inning, give me a beer. There you go. It should do, yeah, it should be about a one beer or inning. Like, get you nice and right for like a little rumble <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> All right. What if the game goes 20 innings? As Red Sox Yankees games always do. Well, you better. I hope. I hope you got a little bottle to pee in. <laughs> All right. So they got David Ortiz, Kevin Euclid, okay. Ross, Pedroia, Sweeney, Gonzalez. Ooh, Listen, like this was a piece. good. This was a good Red Sox team. It was no, no Red Sox was as scary as David Ortiz and then uh -huh. uh, Manny right next, right behind uh, each other. Man. Nerve wracking. Those were scary times. 
All right, Freddy Garcia. All right, Freddy. Two starts. That's a high ERA, way. my guy. That's a Sheesh. high ERA. That, oof. Man. All right, Mike. Let's see what Mike does here. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Man. Freddy Garcia always looked kind of like if you cloned um, Andy Pettit, but not really. Yeah. You see it? You were like, yo. Oh. I want hey. Drop down on that. But it's right there. Yeah. Uh, now, as someone who was. As someone Andrew who Jones. Played, as someone who's, who's actually played uh, left field in Fenway Park on a video game, I know how hard <laughs> it is to play it in the sunshine in the daylight. It's hard, so, it's hard to, to cover, yeah. It's hard yeah. to cover. There's a lot of shadows. Russell yeah. Martin. Yeah, yeah, boy. Shout out to Russell Martin, who came to the Yankees and immediately looked like a baby. Yep. Because he shaved all his facial hair. Had to. Shout out to uh, Red Sox. They have Wally. Their mascot. Do the uh -huh. Yankees have a mascot? Yeah, it's called Rings. Twenty-seven yeah, of them. Twenty-seven yeah. of them, pal. And some of you are we saying we can make a mascot out of rings. Some of y'all are saying Jesus Romero. Why is the last time the Yankees won two thousand and nine? And we will say, shut up, shut up, pal. You want to go outside and fight? Yeah, yeah. How about that? <laughs> hey, you want to? Hey, oh, foul ball. Ah, come on, ball boy. Oh, ah! Why are you the ball boy and the Red Sox can't make a catch? Whoa, you hate to see it. Two of the greatest moments in M when you go to a baseball game is if the ball, not ball boy, because it'd be a ball girl as well, if they make a spectacular catch or if they drop the ball and you got to heckle them. Because that's what yeah. we do in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? Catch that ball, you loser. What are you? Hey, hey, hey. You're on a traveling team, for Christ's sakes. Bow. Oh. What a crowd at Fenway Stadium. Is Fenway Park. Fenway Park. Fenway Park. I don't even respect that in Fenway Park. It should be called the park. It's, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> a, it's, hot. it's, hot. it's a very nice stadium, I'll be honest with you. It's one of the it's historical. few original um, MLB stadiums there. And when you go there, you realize how short Americans used to be because everything in it is super small. But oh, they also boy. serve delicious clam chowder. So, And you don't really think about clam chowder during a baseball game, but it works. It works, especially if it's, you know, a little chilly out, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. But then by the, by the seventh inning, you really got to stretch, if you know what I mean. You got to stretch, go home, watch The Departed. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Stottlemyre. Oh, Joe gee. Girardi. Yeah. Hey, oh, boy. Yeah. People forgot Joe Girardi, after winning the World Series in 09, pulled over and helped someone whose car was in a car accident That's right. on uh -huh. the highway. So shout yep. out. And he also, he got braces because his daughter got braces. He didn't need braces, but just to show solidarity with her. Solidarity, look at that. Great dad, every, great coach. Everyone's like, Jesus, what does this have to do with baseball? And I already have to say, absolutely not. Oh, that's going to be, that's going to be a, pro, a play off the wall oh. right there. That's, he's in there for a Fair double. Ball. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, okay. All right. Well hit. Oh, he's, okay. You know what? Nice little... He caught that. That ball hung a little too high. Yeah. Right there. That wasn't where he wanted to place that pitch. And then that bounce. That's mm -hmm. that. If yeah, it had yeah, the wall. straight. Yep. Yep. It's a tough play. You know? It's the little things in baseball. Oh, look who like it that. is. It's Justin, oh, Dustin, Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia. Wow. Hey, wow. Dustin. Why do you do that Dude. weird little hop every time you do everything? Huh? Dustin, the joy of... Remember all the times yeah, we chanted that yeah, at Yankee yeah. Stadium? Yeah. Take Never. your helmet off. I dare you. Drops it in. Oh. Come on, Russ. See, that's why I couldn't play baseball, because anytime the ball dropped out the glove, I'm running. Like, anytime. <laughs> and I wouldn't I wouldn't stop at second. I can I'd make it. Running. I, I, I can make it. <laughs> I'd be the only player with at least 10 inside the park home runs a season. <laughs> yeah. This guy's got super wheels. Yeah. You gotta keep an eye on him on the base pass. All right, Pedro. Shout out to the guy. Shout out to the guy in the stands doing a Celtics jersey. Like, bro, yeah. it's not. Yeah. I get it, Just but like, yeah, any you Boston can't team, Knicks, man, You can't wear a Knicks jersey to a Yankee game. It's not the same. No, no, it's not. But on the other side, you're like, well, the Celtics have won, and I'm like, good point. Shout out to that lady in the Yankees T-shirt housing those Cracker Jacks. You know the vibes. 
She doesn't care if they ever get back. Ooh. <laughs> All right, A-Rod. Foul balls corner, are cool. Man. Foul balls are cool because it's like, if you don't catch it, it's no biggie. It's like, yeah. oh, just do it over. But if you do catch yeah. it, it's like, ah, it's like, oh, feel. wow. Yep. Especially if you do it dramatically and like dive over a tarp or something like that. Yep. All right, two and one on Pedroia. Running a second, a little short lead because he knows he can't run. Pops Ooh. Up. Right. Nope, that's back. Big cut for no reason. Okay, two and two. Two and two of Pedroia. Freddy Garcia is sweating like he is on trial for a double homicide in the bottom of the first. Got one out with a runner on second. Dustin, what you going to do? What you going to do? Two, two. Let's see if Freddy's got it. Breaking ball inside. Hey. Popped up. Is it going to stay alive? Stay in play? It's get it, Russ. Get it, got Russ. It. Got, got it. Got him. Good job. Beat Good job. It. Get him out of here. Leave that guy stranded on second base island. Let's go. All right. Now, Freddie Garcia, his scouting report, he has two starts. He has to control the problem. Oh, okay. So, so far, his control has been a problem. But he plays off hitter's aggressiveness. So, now for those, who, those of you who don't know what baseball means, him playing off players' uh, aggressiveness means, like, he goes at them. Um, uh, aggressively yeah you know what i'm saying if they are very if they're uh you know like to take big swings he's going to take advantage of that he okay, also does have... uh he makes little no dog noises while throwing he's like, uh, like that uh, uh, very dmx energy you know what i'm saying it's a beautiful thing adrian gonzalez at the plate uh he was traded from the dodgers i believe to the red sox and then proceeded to suck let's see if he sucks now all right, Freddie. Freddie's doing a kind of softball toss that I, I don't think is. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, he's trying to. He's, want. Hey, Freddie, he's trying to drop listen. it. You know, what I'm saying he's trying to drop the ball yeah. in. Ah, oh, yep. David Ortiz. Oh boy, big We're, poppy. Uh, okay, big poppy. Uh oh. Listen, don't hang a curveball right here, my guy. If the curve's not working, it's not working. Go to something else. He needs to play. He got to get that inside corner more. Hey, 100 years of Fenway Park. Love it. All right. 100 years. 100 years. You know, as soon as you sit in that chair, that chair is 100 years old. Who was the guy? Who's the guy from Jason Bourne movies? What's his name? Uh, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. 100 years ago, Matt Damon was born on the pitcher's mound. That's right. A lot of people don't know that. Okay. Oh. All right. Hate to, see it. Hate to see it. Oh, oh, and you got yourself oh. a ground rule double that is going oh. to bring in a run. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. And the Red Sox take the lead. Really one going. on the board. Wow. Look at Bobby Valentine. Excited to be finally managing a team that gets some wins. Ooh, take that, Mitch. So, <laughs> right here, <laughs> everyone knows you hate that little corner. Yep. So we're a little, we're not near the pesky pole, but we're close enough. You know, that's a short distance. All you need is a lucky bounce, and there you go. The double gets. Away. I mean, honestly, that is one of the, if not the shortest, fences I have ever seen in a baseball stadium. Like you said, like any type of bounce, you got a grand rule double. So, yeah. as a Yankee fan, uh, we can't really talk because our right field corner is small as hell too. Like, let's not, <laughs> not throw stones. I've seen kids home with a wiffle bat there. <laughs> All right. Big poppy right here, David All Ortiz. Right. Oh, he did it. That All means right. it's go time. That means it's go time. Listen, with the new the new sanitary rules, you can't be spitting on bats. I'm sorry. Right? Uh, yeah, yep. I don't know that. He's wearing sunglasses in the middle of the day because he's trying. That's right. Woo. That's right. Oof. Look at that. Look at that energy. Look at that strength. Man, me, Jesus. What do you this think guy's he has? foul balls go two miles. What do you think he had? Oh, most career home runs against the Yankees. Wow. wow. Ted Williams, bro. Carl Yastrzemski. Jim Rice is like, hey, I'm here too, guys. Hey, guys. I used to play for the, for the Red Sox too. too. Like, Who is Jim Rice? <laughs> what, do you think, uh, what do you think David Ortiz had 
before had it as a meal though before he oh, came. Oh, right. Because it's a day game. It's a day game. Yeah. Oh, listen. Before I forget about the game. Before he stepped to the plate, he finished in the dugout. Mangu, which is mashed plantains, salami, which is salami, and queso frito, which is Dominican hey, fried. Hey, all right. He's hit one. He ripped one up. Wow, was that a double? Yeah, wow. that's a, oh, another that's double. a, that's a another, tricky one. Oh, another double. And another you know, double. It had to be a slow roller if David Ortiz was able to get to second base because he didn't like uh, at this oh, point. Yeah. He wasn't even running. He would just but, crash the ball out the park. The guy runs like my grandma. Bow. Lucky for him, it hit the corner, and Andrew Jones is out there. And at that point, I love Andrew Jones, but at this point in his career, he had an arm like a snake. I mean, it was almost perfectly straight up the outfit. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. Yeah, but you know what? Worse. It's only 2-0. Oh. This is one of those highly frustrating games that you're just, now you're like, huh, you're going to do this all day, huh? Yeah, down 2 all. Yeah, Bottom you might start first. doing other. You might bust out the MacBook. You might start yeah. going on Twitter, <laughs> yeah. maybe a little Reddit. You know, you're not losing. You're not taking attention away from the game, but you're doing other stuff. Maybe wash the dishes. You're multitasking. Ow. Yeah. You turn the volume up all the way on the TV and you go in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Or you do what's called a classic Yankee nap where you fall asleep during the game. But when something happens, it wakes you up. And you're like, oh, wow. Home run. Oh, wow. Whoa, wow. Whoa. 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 Well, what in it is it? Wow. Also, there's that, that great false alarm in that situation where it's at the track and then it's caught and you wake up for a pop out. Yeah. You ruin my REM sleep. Kevin Euclid. All right. I mean, so you honestly, got out of it. Like two I mean, runs. I, okay. Oh, oh it's two outs. Okay, cool. Because I was like, you could have definitely doubled off Poppy right there because he he was lightly jogging at third. So the Yankees are down by two. No big deal. Mm -hmm. the Yankees got a lot of firepower. Mark oh, Teixeira. Big you know it is big sexy Tex. Yeah. Big. Big Mark Teixeira. Everyone's like Mark Teixeira, great player. Everyone remember they had to change the rules because he slammed into somebody, a catcher, for absolutely no reason. <laughs> Big energy. Listen. Uh, play it's, it's a shame play that it's a shame that uh, Richie Sexton, Richie Sexton came before yeah. Teixeira or after because then he took the big sexy name and they could have been Big yeah. Sexy and Big Taxi. So yeah, yeah, Sexy Taxi. Yes. That's a sexy infield. Let's go. Oh. Mark Teixeira was an amazing player. And I think we uh, Yankee fans kind of took him for granted. I mean, when they won, they appreciated yeah. him. We kind of took him for granted. You got to remember, he replaced uh, Giambi. And we, act we had an actual first baseman. So, yeah. you know, you got you can't count, look your blessings in their mouth or something like that. Yeah. All right. You look at the nervous, buddy. That rope might not be working for you. And Tex had power, man. He was crushing those balls in the eye. Uh, okay, got under it. Now, a lot of you watching at home, you're saying, you know what? This game is not that hard. I could hit that ball. It's not that difficult. And no, I want to say it is very difficult. It is, it is impossible. Difficult. I would venture to say that it is impossible, unless you are actually a professional baseball player. Any object coming at you at 90 miles an hour is probably not hittable with a piece of wood. And to share his retired at first. And we yep. show the Giants. Some highlights the from the Mets. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. go. Oh. 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 San Francisco Giants. Oh, wow. Oh, the Giants decided to do a Met move for once. Okay. All right, Curtis Granderson. Yeah, I Curtis. once got, I once got confused for him in, um, shout out to my favorite bar, Foley's on 33rd Street. And I said to the person, there's absolutely nothing about me that looks like I play sports. So what makes you think I'm <laughs> Curtis Grandison? Why would you say that? Did I grow a beard in two hours since you saw the but, game? Shout out to Curtis Grandison. He played the, he was a great player and he was really, uh, he, he was, his foundation was about spreading baseball to other countries and in That's the black right. community. So shout out to him. Worked out Super there. Important. And then he went on to be a Met where he also had some popularity there because Curtis Grandison's whole game was either home run or strike. Yeah. And what did he do? Strike out. Strike out. He got a lot of change going on. 
too. Oh boy, the ropes, the chains, a little chain, a big chain. He got a he got a zinc chain, a copper chain, a magnesium chain. Oof. I think that that first one might be uh, potassium. Yeah, he's, he's all over there. <laughs> he got a multivitamin chain. <laughs> he's like, what kind of what kind of what kind of what kind of chain is that? He's like Centrix, bro. Yeah, extra silver. Yeah. Shout out to Andrew right. Jones, whose parents were Let's like, go. you know what? We're gonna put a U and Andrew. No, stop us! I dare you. Stop us! Andrew can't. Jones and me. Woo. Let's go. Deep cut. No more. You can't sing. MLB does not have the money to clear the rights for that song. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I know. I forgot. It's, it's, it's a rinky dink operation. Major this League is Baseball. A, <laughs> this is a GoFundMe we're doing to raise money for the MLB. Please give deep. Russell Martin. All right. The best part about baseball is because you wear a cup, you can constantly grab your balls. And yeah, that's and, it, and it's yeah, it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. it, you know, you just safety first. Oh, it's down. Oh, that lady in the, that's lady in the purple, purple killing, key. yeah, killing, killing peanuts. peanuts. Relax, <laughs> relax, Mildred. <laughs> Slow down, Mildred. He didn't even come to the game for the baseball. <laughs> <laughs> so she shook her chin and shook her jacket out because they had shells in it. Your great, yeah, little Petey has a peanut allergy, Mildred. My son's back here. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Andrew. Okay. I like when the mic just catches some random like vulgarity. Come on, John. Outside. Oh boy, two and two. Three and two. Full count. Full count. Hey, CC, I see you. CC the God. Also, shout out to you, Miro, for letting us letting me know that there's sound on this game. Sitting here in silence. Oh. Oh. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. Take first. Take first. Nice. There you go. See, right there. That's what you got to know. You got to know how to stop the bat from going around. Nothing yeah, worse right. than when they, you get caught uh -huh. out, but you stop yeah. yourself. That, that, that bad check swing. Hates. Andrew's one of the best at that. Russell Martin, a.k.a. Russell Boss Martin. Baby at the plate. You know you know the vibes. Was he Canadian or something? I think he, so. Something like that. Or he played. He played for the Blue Jays. There you go. Close enough. Canadian. If you played. <laughs> You ever played for Toronto? You're Canadian now. Sorry, you're that's Canadian. the rules. He played for the Blue Jays and he listened to Drake in the locker room. He's Canadian. Oh, all right. Spitting on the hands. Spitting on the gloves. It's time to get serious. I never understood spitting on the gloves because that's like gross. But shout out to Jorge Posada, who didn't wear gloves would spit on his own hands and told people since he was a child he used to pee on his hands to make his hands rougher yeah so that was a that right. was a player's player bro also if you crush cinder blocks with your hands it also has the same effect i have all my children doing that every day twice a day cinder block stress balls come on russ 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 let's go Oh, okay. Ooh, way low. Two outs. We got to run on first. That two, wasn't two. a ball. Hey, Eduardo! Who is now uh, the enemy. Oh, did he start with the Red Sox? Yes, he did. It was a shame. Popped up. Oh, out, of, he out, space? Out, out, out of play. Out of, out of play. Out of play. Hey. Out of play. <laughs> you know? But if it was Derek Jeter, he would have dove on top of the dugout and caught that. If it was Just Derek saying. Jeter and he dove on top of the dugout, that would mean he is playing very far out of position. And that <laughs> probably would have got Joe Girardi or Joe Torrey fired. <laughs> I, what I love about MLB is like if you, catch, if you catch a foul ball, everyone acts like you caught the ball that ends game seven of the World Series. Like, oh, yeah. the, like whoa. Yeah. They, I like when people, like, like people catch the, the ball and then they, the they hold it up in the air and they like everyone's like, yo, go ahead, Joe. Wow. <laughs> that guy in section 301 oh. Oh, with the glove he brought to the game. 
Wow. Unbelievable. Give this wow. guy a gold glove. Did you see how he pushed that little girl out the way to catch that foul? <laughs> he didn't spill his beer at all. All right, here we go. Oh, I hate to see it. He punched oh, his mouth. Oh, wow. wow. Russell turned all the way around to face the umpire and be off camera, so you know right. he said something real messed up. And since we don't have, like, the pitch, the little pitch box, the digital stuff, you got to go with your eyes. Because yeah. if it was the pitch, oh, you'd be tight. Because sometimes the pitch block, they'll be like, yo, here's the pitch. And it was, like, way over here, and they'll make it uh -huh. red. And you're like, come on, guy, what is going on? What's going on here? Call it fair. <laughs> all right. We got Jared at the plate. Jared. Remember. Jared, Jared Santalamakia. Remember, ladies, what you want to tell your friends is he went to Jared. All right. No. Yeah. People forget Jared Sakamakia quit baseball and started a jewelry store where you can mm -hmm. get Pandora bracelets and things of that nature. So things with charms. Go to check him out. Yeah. Smart guy. Reminder. Reminder: the second, the bottom of the second is sponsored by number one show on late night, Jesus Romero, available on Showtime. Right. Also sponsored Monday by, Thursday. also sponsored by Bodegas and uh, uh, Air Force uh, Ones. Uh, that's right. Here we go. Text with the out. And Sal Salamakia is bamboozled. He doesn't know what's going on. Ross. Oh, yeah. Cody Ross, ladies and gentlemen. He could have either been a baseball player or a country singer with that name. Father of Rick Ross. Oh, here we go. It's Ken. Ken, who I didn't realize the bow ties were for charity. I thought he was just a dweeb. So apparently, no, he's he, he, there's a reason for the bow ties. Okay. Shout out so, to him. Shout out to you, my guy. Dropped in. Strike one. You know what, umpire? I really like the one that's super loud and cool. And he's like, strike one. You're going like, to do this for yeah. the whole game? My yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I like the guys that don't even say words. They're just like, Wah! Wah! Mm -hmm. Also, there's the umpire that um he balances himself. I think, is he doing it? He balances himself on the back of the catcher. Which is, I weird. don't know how that's allowed. That's, I don't. <laughs> that's very I'm, weird. I, you got, that's, that's like someone standing too close to you on the train. And he's like, yo, my guy. My man. My man. You there's, got a bulletproof yo, vest on. What are you, why are you touching me? There's, there's room over there. What if while he's touching the catcher's back, he starts slowly stroking? <laughs> he's massaging hey. his back. He's like, hey, hey you're a little tense it. there, my guy. Hey. Yeah. Let me, let me hey. work that knot out for you. Hey, you left runners on the first and third and last inning. I, you know, let it come on. Right. Listen, you know what? Put the calm app in. I want you to get those knots out your back. That's right. Relax. All right. Oh, Freddie. Freddie. Freddie with the changeup way outside of the zone. That's why I couldn't be a manager because I, I would do a mound visit right there and I'd just come out and be like, Freddie. What's going on, pal? My guy. Come on. My guy. My guy. Come on. Like, are you Fre are you Freddy or are you Freddy Krueger? I don't know. Was that motivational enough? I don't know. Nah, nah, I didn't do that. It was good though. <laughs> hey Rod with the nice leisurely jog back to third. Yeah. This is, a, this is the part of the broadcast where we start talking about random things that have nothing to do with the broadcast. Yeah. Like I talk, do you know uh, most bridges in New York are made out of metal from Hartford, Connecticut? Yeah. It's, uh, they got a lot, a, a big steel industry up in Hartford. Hey! Oh, and there's a base hit. In the gap right there. Cody Ross is on base with one out, bottom of the second. So yeah. Uh, a lot of steel up in Connecticut. Here we see a right. beautiful view of the skyline. Uh, this game brought to you by Budweiser because you deserve what every individual should enjoy regularly. That's right. what Budweiser stands for. It's an acronym. Remember, it says, please drink responsibly. And mm -hmm. with that, they're like, we are done and done. You do whatever mm -hmm. you want. Yes. Dr. Darnold McDonald. Darnell okay. McDonald. He had the same average I had. He looks like a Streets of Rage character. I enjoy that. Bow. He does. He looks like he just pops out a brick wall and you have to like fight him, but his energy bar is super high. Yeah. And he comes out with a bat and a helmet on. And he can do uh what's that capia what's that Brazilian dance? Capo, capoeira? Yeah. Banana way. Yeah. Banana way, banana. 
He has on Junko jeans and he'll kick you in the face. <laughs> oh! Wow! He oh. heard that! Did he oh. get it up? Off the oh. monster! Off the monster! Off the monster! Does he have the wheels? All right. When is the second and third? One out, bottom of the second. That's not good. That's not good. Not good also, at all. Shout out Tony Pena! Hey! Tony Pena sighting! Hey! Playing off the monster is probably. That's like a weird Hardy. position because it's like yeah. what you do every game and now Boston was like, oh by the way, we got a big we got a big wall in our stadium. Yeah. Like how good are you at geometry? And then you gotta now you gotta do math, you gotta break out a protractor yeah. to figure out the angle that it bounces off the wall. Yo, using you gotta, chi, uh, using uh, using sine, cosine, and tangent. Yeah. If ball, then use the Pythagorean you gotta, theorem. You gotta get oh, a scrap man. of paper. You gotta show your work. It turns into it turns into a region's test for math. Yeah. No. That's not what we're here for. We're here to see the I great American you. game. That's right. Mike Avila is 0 for 1 today with a fly out in the first, which was wow. last inning. Thank you. Mike Avila also looks like a personal trainer who will seduce your aunt. And Lucille Roberts. I can see that. I can see that. He's very popular in the Ronkonkoma uh, branch. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lucille Rocker, when you come right off the L.I. Double R. That's right. He's broken up a couple marriages already. Hate to see it. Yes, sir. That's one of his strengths, actually. It's a good mental game. We got Cody Ross at third and Darnell at second. Cody Ross right. is not known for his speed, but he is known to be very short and bold. All right, right Freddie. Come on, Freddie. I like the I like the cut of your brim. Let's get this guy out of here. Oh! Oh, Brandy! Oh! oh Brandy wow. plays it on the hop, and Ross is in for the score. You know the Yankees are down. I feel like I feel like Gardy could have caught that. If Gardy had ran, just Gardy with a nice slide. Yeah. As someone who cannot do a sliding catch, I feel he could have made a sliding catch. You know? Same. Now we got runners at the corners with one out. And Stadelmeyer is out to the mound right. to talk to Freddie. Let's see how high this was. Oof. Wow, Jeez. all right. Yeah, Freddie is throwing right. meatballs. He's throwing oh, Mama Leone's meatballs. Oh, Over. man. All right. Actually, Curtis, okay, Grandy couldn't have caught that. He couldn't. I'll take that back <laughs> yeah, yeah. on replay. He's like, Freddie, get your head in the game. All right. So this season with two strikes. He's giving up 10 hits and six extra base hits. Oof. Mm -mm -mm. Yeesh, mm -mm. you hate to see it. Settle down, settle down. That was, to me, that was a settle down mound visit. Let's see, let's see what yeah, he does here. The thing about settle down mound visits is they don't settle anything down. Like in your head, you already know you're messing up. The crowd knows you're messing up. The next, the next pitch you throw, you're like, I hope this one actually goes where I want it to go. It's like... <laughs> Oh, Ryan Sweeney at the plate. He's very dangerous in beer pond. All right, we got run. We got, we got ducks on the pond. The one out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Runners at the corners for Ryan McSweeney, who right. we got is some action the... in the bullpen. Okay, they're up in the bullpen. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, Ryan McSweeney actually built a beer bong in the dugout. For the team. You, you you never want to have to see action in the bullpen at the bottom of the second, especially in a Red Sox Yankee game because oh no, yeah. these games could easily go through eight or nine pitchers. And yeah, just, seriously. At the end of the game, Joe Girardi's pitching in the bottom of the eighth, and you're like, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. Also, if we're lucky enough, this becomes an ugly, brutal blowout, and we got to see some position pitchers pitching. Yes. That one time Nick Switcher was pitching was amazing. I think even further back, Wade Boggs threw a couple, uh, pitched a couple frames for the Yankees back in the day. And he had this weird thing where he would like throw the ball and then land in a squat. Mm. It was really weird. That's a shot. Not the Wade us. Boggs. Remember when he rode, he rode the horse after they won? That's right. Yeah, I, what cop is just like, yeah, just take my horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that was a laser. Oh, and it's oh, Boggs. Yeah, he you better take it right now. Nope. 
Darnell scored. Oh, uh, Darnell scores. And it's 4 it's nothing. Four zero. Sox. Sox. Yeah, hate to see it. And now we see Joe Girardi doing what he did most of the coaching career, just standing there looking. Just standing there looking. <laughs> Man, that was a laser. He should have had to swish. He had position, caught it. And with the sun in his face. So, yeah. Shout to him. Throws online. It's the sideburns, man. It's the Florida sideburns. Make you, they make you more aerodynamic. I yep. didn't realize that. So you got Dustin Pejoria. Pejoria you know, he's, back, he's back here with his Penn Station beard. By the way, folks, I will be slandering all Red Sox players throughout the uh, broadcast. So prepare yourself. He's going for the, he's going for the steal. Oh, got him. Oh, not. That, not. No, I don't know about that. Did I not. don't know about that. Wow, look at Mike Avila stealing bases and stealing hearts at your at your local gym. See right here, got a clean look. Oh, no, Ooh. slow tag, slow tag, yeah. slow tag. See, by putting the foot, using the outside foot, he gets that little extra bit of time that it takes Cano to sweep the bag. Yep. A smart baseball right there. All right, back to Dustin Pedroia. Dustin Pedroia has the face that he works at Barstool Sports. All right, Ooh. right up the middle. Oh boy. That's what that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. Oh and boy. the score is now five. five zero. Nothing. Wow. Bottom in second. Yeah, Girardi is gonna say some expletives right now. I hope the mic oh. doesn't catch it. Remember Girardi. We've been curse. told not to curse. Girardi so I hope curse. that Joe doesn't curse. He says, gosh darn it. Yeah. He's got, really hey, blowing it. Hey, what the heck are you doing? You know? Come on, get your noodle back in the game. Come on, come on, my guy. All right, 5-0 Red Sox Yankees. And you know what? This might have been a Saturday game, which means you forgot it was on. So you're turning it, you're turning it on at like two o'clock. You already missed. And you're like, how are they down by five already? How does now this happen? Is, this is when you find out what type of fan you are. Are you a true Yankee fan? And you're like, you know what? They're gonna come back. Or do you say, you know what? Forget it, it's done, it's over with. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I mean, right. I'm in there mean. until the until the, until the, everybody starts filing out of the stadium. Okay. Catch me! I'm the last one on the dance floor at stands, bro. That's I right. Gotta... Play Rapata, bro. Talk to him. All righty. There's a lot of action in the bullpen. I, you hate. I don't like it. All right, two outs. Runner on the corner. Let's see what Rapata can do here. I always confuse Clay Rapata with Parappa the rapper because the names were kind of <laughs> similar. Okay. How hard did he get enough? He did not get enough. Nope. Curtis got it. Curtis! Let's go. This buds for the blues the Reds and the Warriors. This buds for the Giants, the Jazz, and the Magic. This buds for the home team. The damage is done. The Red Sox are up by five. As we go to the third. Mm -hmm. Eduardo Nunez at the plate. Uh, 389 average, no home runs, three ribbies, 429 on base percentage. This guy likes to spray the ball all over the field. And he likes to spray champagne in the club at night. On Dykeman. You know, Miro, a lot of people don't know this. I have never had a banana. I have never had a banana. Never, never had, had a banana. Soup. That's right. Or soup. Or soup. Uh, have you ever had banana Michael... soup? No, my name is Michael K. I've never had bananas or soup. That is wild. But you know what? I'll be looking to your show. Uh, I'll be looking forward to your show later, where you interview Alan Alda for six hours straight. Hey, center stage! Yeah, can't wait. Can't wait. While we just, I have watched many episodes of Center Stage Talk during about rain it. delays at bar. Right. I'm the guy Same. at the bar, like, because hey, you put the captions on. 
Come, come, on. On. come on. Come on. Come on. He's interviewing Goose Gossage. I don't want to miss this, bro. Come on. Derek Jeter. Let's go, Captain. Captain, my captain. Let's do. Oh. You. Oh. Okay. All right. Ah. Okay. And you All see right. that, and you're like, wow. People are just going to be like, oh, he's overrated. And I'll be like, uh, you know what? He dated Mariah. So, you know what? Mm -hmm. All right. You know what? Pete Rose, Look at this. Derek Jeter. Look at the comparison. Neck and neck. And Derek Actually, and Derek Jeter wins. never. Derek Jeter never bet. That's not exactly. Actually, is that even, like, I mean, they should let Pete Rose in. Like, come on. Bro. Yeah, let him live. There's been, there's been a lot worse. Also, Pete Rose is such a cool name. Yeah, oh, yeah. You gotta have a guy named Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. Also, he bet on himself. That's just confidence. That's not really gambling, if you think about it. That's, that's pretty much the worst type of gambling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nick Swisher. All right, not Mr. Related to Dick, Swisher. let's go. Not related to Swisher Sweets at all. No, but he's the sweetest Swisher. Shout out to um, the guy in the front row behind home plate in like the suit who must just come from his Lehman Brothers job. You see him? <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that what's that? Is that Barney Frank? What, what, what are you doing? To, what are you doing to the Yankee Sox game? <laughs> He's like, hold my cause. Hold my cause. I'm going down for the third inning. <laughs> Even oh, Jeter man. can't believe it. Jeter's like, who is He's this like, guy? Who is that guy? <laughs> is that Al Gore? I don't know, but you know what? You know he got, you know he got mad snacks inside of his suit pocket. Oh, like he went to the metal detectors like that. Oh, oh, excuse me, I have a heart condition. I need those chicken nuggets. Yes, and the prosciutto on my left pocket I need as well. Oh man! All right, we got Robbie back up. Should we go back to that? Back. Remember that used to be how it was in base baseball games. You have to wear a suit and ties. Should we bring that one base? <laughs> that's 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 the look, right? I can't. Three piece suit with the vest. Yeah, Ooh, bro. Hey, bro. Yeah. There you go. What I'm talking about. Here we go. Okay. That's the problem that's with this. The problem is it, it's a hit. That's how you get a game. That's how you, yeah. I was you know, say, that's how you get a game going. That's how you get a game going. Two out single. Let's go. <laughs> All you can hope for here is a home no. Again, I will. I will mention. Tremendous discipline at the plate. Let's see. It. Let's watch this at bat. And this is a clinic. But he left New York, went to Seattle, got the bag. Yep. Got the they bag. came back to the Mets and was like, ah. Yeah. I feel like he's 48 now, though. So, I mean. Yeah. He should have stayed with the. He got the bag, but I feel like opportunities have, would have, he would have had more opportunities if he had stayed at the Yankees. You're preaching to you the choir. Is. You know I wanted is, him. To, I wanted him. He was next in line. He was the and, most recognizable Yankee after Jeter on all these teams. And he was and also, a Yankee lifer. Where can you even get Mangu in Seattle? In Seattle. Doesn't exist. You go to, go to Hopefuls, they're like, ah, yeah, we have, you want plantains? Yeah, we have roasted ones in aisle four. They're ready made. Oh. Uh, he got instant. Oh, okay, Rod. He got instant Mangu. It's just like ripples in the top <laughs> of that like, water. It's like powder. <laughs> just like water. <laughs> My Mangu, boyfriend, with strawberries. <laughs> uh, Black seed As always, the top of the third inning is brought to you by the Bodega Boys podcast. The number That's one right. podcast in the quarantine. You know the vibe. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, the brand is strong. Yes, sir. Oh! He didn't get enough on that. Big fly. Oh, 400 feet. Shout out to us being real Yankee fans because we know when the ball is not going out. We're not getting yeah. super amped. Like, yeah, we're, we're not. You can, oh. you, can tell by, you can tell by the sound if it's going out. And we have a special guest. Yo. CC oh. the God. What's good? Oh, CC the God. What's going on, oh, CC? Whoa. Thank you for joining us as we do, this, we do this. We do this uh, illegal broadcast of the MLB without their express audio consideration or express concern. <laughs> Yo, I'm watching the game right now, too. Uh, Yo, who started? Yeah, we're just, hey. This was uh, uh, Freddy Garcia. Garcia. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so we told them not to give us a game where we know the ending, so we were really going through this blind. We have, we got a feeling, but you know, it's just, yeah, we're just watching it. <laughs> Fred, what's, it like to, what's it like to watch a game like this? Do, 
Do you remember this or? I do not remember this game. It's so many Red Sox uh, Yankee games, like, but I, I do not remember this game. But I mean, I'm sure like it, it was a, a great finish because the, the games that we played against them were never over. Whether we never. were up 10 runs or they were up 10 runs, like anybody can come back at any time in these games, especially like in the, the middle years for me at a rivalry like 2012, which, which this was, uh, yeah. I think, 2012. So yeah, this was uh, this was probably a crazy game. Oh, definitely. Yeah, no. Nah. And they, they just they just had a shot of you a couple of minutes ago up on a up on a up on a fence. Yeah, just watching it. <laughs> Middle of the fence, up on a fence, like ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Red Sox Yankee. No, Red Sox Yankee games are so weird because they could have like a six run lead or we could have a six run lead. And you're just like, nope, that's yep, not. It you know, it's, it ain't over. Even when we had Mo, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you never know what they're with. Never. Anything could happen. It was crazy. And it wasn't like, and it wasn't the type of thing where like they score one run in the second and another one in the fifth and then nah. two in the third. They, they just have like the wild six run inning. You be like, yo, yeah. what? They got the announcer like, the oh. Red Sox are cracking it open in the bottom of the third when oh. it rains and pours. Ball's going off the monster like crazy. Like every other hitter, double, double, every double. Every other hit. <laughs> and that's the most annoying one. Cause if it's like home runs, you're like, I understand that. Right. If it's just. Once it hits off the monster, and then sometimes it'll uh, shoot off the monster and bounce ricochet, up or shoot out an angle, and oh, frustrating. It's, a, it's inside the parking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you hate when like one of our players hits a monster that if the monster wasn't there, that would have been out the park. Yeah, and it's like, like a line jump off the walls. Or something. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it make you so. That's when you're like, get rid of the monster. <laughs> Oh, Bobby! That's Bobby. how we use this ball. Oh, 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 Bobby! That's a slow bowler. My oh, those man. are the most frustrating. <laughs> Yo, he walked to first. Big Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Joe Girardi coming out. That's Joe's like, Yo, this dude just walked to first eating a drumstick. What are y'all doing? <laughs> I'm putting CC in. Give me the ball. Clay Rapata, one of my best friends too. Now he's a pitching coach with the Giants. So, Cece, what would when Joe Girardi comes out at this point and he knows he's pulling you? He's just does he say you got to go or like how would this mound visit work? Nah, yeah, they just tell you like you know you did a good job or if they're keeping you in, you know, they're going to go over the game plan for the next hitter. But most of the time when Joe came out, it was to take you out and, and make a pitching change. Okay. So Mel, because we see Mel a couple times already, but he 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 went up the first time to Freddie. And I said, I was like, that's a settle you down mount visit. Is that a real thing or? I mean, just to give you a break, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes with the older pictures, like like at this time, Freddie was older, I was older. So most of the time they wouldn't come out unless it got real bad. So, right. Um, you know, things had to get, 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 get like a, a real rocky for somebody to come out to an older picture. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I mean, just to settle you down and, and go over some, you know, the next couple hitters. Right. He uh, hit Kevin Euclid. Yeah. And I actually uh, hurt. You were kind of seeing it in his face. He's like, he's yeah. like I'm, I'm just taking it for the team. Like, he's like, <laughs> oh, phew. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, MOB. Sorry. I, I, I thought it was going to be me. I, I thought it was going to be you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I told them. I told them when, it come, when I watch baseball, I turn into an 80 year old white guy. What do you want? <laughs> Yo, I had to check before I came on. I was like, yo, what, can I can I say whatever I want? Like, what kind of, you know, where is this going? So Yeah, they were like, no. They was like, keep it clean. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh, boy. Wow. Yo, Poppy only running multiple bases? This is bad. Right. <laughs> so now we got the bases loaded, no outs, bottom of the third. Oof. Yo, Connor still in there? Uh, no, they just took him out. I think it's, it's Phelps. Who's yeah, uh, yeah, Dave Phelps. Dave Phelps. Yeah. Wow, this is crazy. I need to watch some old games, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Cause like we've seen, like I'm, I've probably seen 99.9% .9 of all Yankee games, but these little ones that weren't major, you don't remember anything about them. And then you'll watch them. You're like, oh, I remember this. Oh, I remember that. You gotta yeah. watch the whole thing. <laughs> I held the piss for two at bats. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when the when they do the classics on the, the Yes Network, sometimes you'll look at it and you're like, oh, this is a four hour game. But then you're like, wait a minute, we won in the final two minutes. Like, I'm not going to watch the first eight. <laughs>
And they'll tell you in the info, they're like, yeah, the Yankees got trashed. And then A-Rod hit a home run at the end. So you're like, all right, so I'll come back at the end. Like, oh. <laughs> Yo, Cody Ross with the plate again. Like I said, he looks like an undercover cop, a country singer, or a triple-A baseball player. <laughs> Also, shout out to the Yes Network. They have that special version of the game after the game is done where they cut out all the non-scoring plays. And you can just watch it in like half an hour. Like, yeah. They, they express. I'm like, right? Uh, uh, Jay's in 30. You can watch the game in 30 minutes. They just cut yeah. out the scoring plays. I love it. Five for seven today. Okay. He, he, I guess he was due. He was due. Phelps is locked in. Woo! Ooh, nasty. 93 miles per hour. Yeah, Phelps, he was good for us, man, for a long time. And, um, you know, he just had a few elbow problems, but, and they ended up trading him. But he's still pitching. He's still playing. Yeah. That middle relief, like, when you were coming in the game, did you know, like, I want to be a starter? Because, like, you know, now, now the game is different now. Because before it was like, yo, you going in there, you pitching seven innings. Yeah. Eight innings. You Not, might pitch a, a complete game. Now it's like pitch counts. You know they got the the long relief dudes, middle relief. I mean, and even, then you got your moles. They draft uh, relievers. You know what I'm saying? When I was when I was younger, when I was first coming up, you didn't get drafted as believe. You got everybody was a starter, and then the failed starters turned into relievers. Even Mo, Mo was yeah. a at first that couldn't. You know he couldn't. He he was a failed starter. Ended up being the best closer ever. But now they actually draft relievers. You know college guys. Yeah. Guys that pitch good out of the pen, like, that's a thing now. But when I first, you know, came into the league and when I first was coming up, everybody was a starter, and then they just kind of placed you off of what you can do. Like, if you, you know, if you're a middle relief guy, you can throw three or four good innings, then they put you in middle relief. You know right. Right? Are they going to throw out? Nope. Uh, oh, Curtis. A little bobble. Curtis. What was that throw? <laughs> what was that throw? Yeah, I remember when the Yankees they took um, yeah, Bobby's when the Yankees like, yeah, had I didn't the even Yankees swim. had uh, when the Yankees had Jabba Chamberlain as a reliever, and then they made him a starter. That was weird, and they had the special rules around him. Yeah, that was I a think, weird I moment. They should have just left him in the bullpen. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. Jabba had that type of arm where you wanted to him to be out there more, but yeah, he was, I mean, out of the bullpen, his his stuff was so electric. He, like he was a monster out the bullpen. He was a monster. Oh seven, oh eight. Um, yeah. Even the for us. I mean, 09, they went back and forth starting, but it, in the playoffs, mm -hmm. he pitched out of the bullpen, and he was great. Him and Phil Hughes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the wheel is All right. Six with Yo. two on and two outs. Oof. Oof. Yo, Kevin Euclid is built like one of the mini refrigerators with legs. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, was y'all like, like, like it's, it's crazy going back and forth in the rivalry. Like, it's, it's been a bunch of players. It was weird having you for, you know, a little bit of time that we had. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I was like, yo, this is wild. And then the, the, El the Ellsbury, like, John yeah. it started with Johnny Damon. And I was Johnny like, Damon was the moment you had to, that's the like, moment all us Yankee fans were like, okay, wait a minute. Because that was like after 04 <laughs> and like. That, oh man, he ain't won the World Series with his help us win in 09. You that's know? true, Thanks. that's true. So then I was like, Yeah, yo, Johnny. Oh, another one. Remember when Johnny Damon stole the base, the uh, on the base of World Series? Like, a lot of people don't remember that. That was like a huge play. That was a huge, it changed like defenses too because everybody that, they were shifted. Remember, mm -hmm. yep, everybody started having to leave a guy at third base or like change the defense or be aware of that after yeah. Johnny did that in the World Series. That was crazy. I remember I was in a Clubhouse, like, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> so at first, you're like, you're going to get thrown. And you're, then, because in the, the camera angle, we couldn't see that there was no one there. And we was like, yo, what are yeah. you doing? <laughs> Only Johnny would do that in the World Series, just take off like that. <laughs> all right, it is 7 0 in the third. Okay. Oof. Man, but, I'm like we all have said, but Listen, it could turn I know, on the drop of a time. I know I was tweeting some. I was tweeting some fire right now. I was like, <laughs> fire Girardi, <laughs> bring back Steinbrenner. This 2012 yeah. was good too. This was the year we we uh, 
we beat Baltimore in the first round, but then I think uh, we lost to, I think we lost to the Tigers in the AFCS. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because during this game, uh, I think we're tied with Baltimore for first place. It's a three-way tie, I believe. It was Baltimore, the Yankees, and maybe Toronto at this point. Yeah. This you back. know you know what it is, because they keep cutting away to the divisional games, like yeah. as they happen at the same time. So you're yeah. like, oh, okay, so, all right. When it matters, <laughs> yeah. This might have been the year G broke his ankle in the playoffs, though. I feel like. Oh, wow, yeah. Wow, yes. Tigers at home, I think. I, I, we got swept. I, I'm pretty sure. I remember that because I was I was dating a girl in Philadelphia and I was watching that game in a bar in Philadelphia when Jeter broke his ankle. Everyone started clapping. Uh, and I was like, "Wow!" I was like, "Wow, bro!" Of all people, dog. Like it's not AJ Pruszynski, dog. It's Jeter. But one of the guys like, explained it to me because he was like, "This is for what you guys did in '09." Yeah. But remember '09? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we we killed them in the we killed them in the World Series. We did. we did. They got that first they game. They, ankle. they got game one, and they were told they were they were feeling well. They were feeling yeah. good. And we came back, baby. I'm crazy, <laughs> especially after losing game one. That series is the only reason that Shane Victorino is always in my mind at all times. From that ground, like the like the last that last hit, like that last ground. <laughs> yeah. We'll meet again. Don't know where. Don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. You see the banners though? And people want to talk about the Yankees, like, yo, y'all be celebrating old rings. The banners is from 1903. <laughs> <laughs> some of those, some of those banners have nothing to do with the Red Sox. They're about like the Titanic crashing and stuff. <laughs> Man, <laughs> everything is Zoom now. Everything. Yeah, Zoom, like, everything. Bro, it's like I, it's like I, when they came up with the iPod, they put the I in front of everything. After this, it's going to be Zoom everything. Zoom, Zoom, everything. Zoom Uber Eats, Zoom everything. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk to the dude dropping your food off while he's dropping it off. We had a whole book club meeting in the Zoom, dog. Like, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> you got to do what works. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad because I'm texting you and I'm looking down. I'm like, I hope they hope, like I'm in class, bro. I was like, oh, I don't want the teacher to see me looking down. Like, <laughs> man. Yeah. Cece, how oh, annoying dude. is the how annoying is the shadow at Fenway in a day game? Uh, it's not bad for me. I mean, it's bad for hitters though. But that's everywhere. Yeah. Any when you play like that four o'clock mid afternoon game, uh, the shadows get bad for the hitters. I remember when I put. When Going back to Milwaukee, I pitched in Milwaukee. Any day game, like as soon as it turned two o'clock, the shadows would come and I would just throw fastballs. I knew they couldn't hit. I, they couldn't, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Couldn't see it. So there's no point in like wasting, you know, you just come right at them um, and, you know, you get good results. And then sometimes they turn on the overhead lights, right? It depends. It, what's the conditions where that happens? Yeah, I mean, it, like, like if it's like a little gloomy or whatever, they'll turn on the lights. Um, but most of the time when the sun's out, you just got to deal with the shadow. and. For the hitter, when you're in the sun and they're in the shade, like it's hard for them to pick up any kind of spin or anything. You know what I'm saying? Like it's almost impossible. And do they still do that thing at Fenway where they they cover the seats in like uh, behind the pitcher in the day games? Yeah. So straight behind, they'll cover that and make it uh, just straight green, so it's so it's more of a batter's eye. Ah, okay. It's text. Come on, Tashera. We gotta score a run soon, right? Like, soon. Yeah, like, no, it's a fun though. But you know, you know how these games be. Like in the sixth inning, y'all mess around and like, bat the the whole order steps to the plate and hits a double. Yeah, but then also the whole game is like six hours long. So you got that, <laughs> right? Yeah. The longest games ever, Red Sox Yankees. <laughs> Red Sox Yankees easily, oh, easily. My. And I, I remember there was one where Johnny Damon he jumped up to catch the ball he actually hurt himself and then it was like a rain delay and it was something like a three or four hour rain delay and my girlfriend at the time was like we need to go home and i was like you thought we stayed here for the whole time baby <laughs> hey tony 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 <laughs> Pena. come on curtis no, so what is he like was he like a drunk Dominican uncle in the clubhouse, or was he a super serious dude? Yeah, uh, he was kind of in between. Like he wasn't serious. At all. He wasn't that serious, 
but I mean, he's he's a great baseball guy. So, like, so for me, like, I would always go to him a lot about because he was a great catcher. So I would always go to him a lot about you know what to throw, different picks and stuff like that. And he managed too, so his like his mind was always you know going about the game and stuff. So he was always he was always great for me, man. Okay. I remember back. He said, I mean, I, I used to always laugh with him about that story when he ran out to Jose Mesa and slapped him with his glove. Y'all ever seen that clip? No. <laughs> he ran out for a mound visit, took his glove off, and slapped Jose, pa- uh, I mean, uh, Jose Mesa and then ran back behind the plate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got to check that clip out. Good night, bro. You got to see that. <laughs> I, got Russell, I see Russell Martin in the dugout. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. With the baby face. <laughs> Go back names here, man. Sixty in the fourth. Okay. Sixty pitches in the fourth. Uh... Yeah, we doing pretty good right now. Yeah. Okay, I'm kind of. Oh, this is hitting right. Yeah. Yeah, it's Grandison. Saw to Lamakia behind the plate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That man's name got every vowel in him. <laughs> That's a triple word score right there in Scrabble. Yo, I just use all my tiles. Holla. It scares me when they go back to the pitcher because I, I keep I keep forgetting that it's uh, Felix Dubron or whatever, and I, it looks like Pedro for a second. He looks like the right now, the lefty. Which one? Oh, uh, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I forget his name, though. The ah. Really good guy that they have. I can't think of his name. Oof. Little Susie Moran. Mm. Let's go, Kurt. Who had? Who you think had the one of the best eyes on this team? Because I, I always talk about uh, Cano because he would foul stuff off, stay alive, and yeah, just kind of wait for his pitch. You know who had a, <clears throat> who's, who's got great play discipline and like knows the strike zone is Guardy. Like if, yeah. you, if you see Guardy uh, getting mad about balls and strikes, it's it, he's right. He's always right. right. I mean, he won't swing at pitches this far off the plate. You know what I'm saying? Hey, there you go, there you go. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm young right there. Cause I got hit. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, go yeah, back, CC. <laughs> go back, CC. <laughs> Yeah, Brett Gardner got a great eye because you always like he's his his at bats are always like extended. He's always just fouling it away, frustrating other yeah. pitchers. So there's been so many times in the game where his at bat he doesn't really get on base, but just the amount of pitches that he took, yeah. like putting like helps the lineup, might take a pitcher out of rotation. Like it's a good player. Like and also watching him grow as a Yankee, he's become like one of my favorite Yankees because like he went from just like just a guy to like one of the veterans on there. Yeah, he went from like a role player to the leader. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and just over the years, just gotten better and better. Made the All Star team. Like, mm-hmm. he just went from one of our guys to actually one of our leaders, which is, which is amazing to watch. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like we used to get mad at him because he'd become come back and he, you know, umpire call a strike. He'd be like, man, it was that far off the play. I'm like, swing, swing the bat. Like, <laughs> you can't let him bring you up on. You know what I'm saying on that? Like, you can get mm-hmm. to. So, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. All right, it is the fourth. Yeah. What, what does that do? Seven. What does that do? What does that do to a pitcher though? Like a guy like Guardy who makes you throw 10, 15 pitches in the at bat. Like, nah, it's frustrating. Like, especially for me. Like, I'm just like, do whatever you're gonna do. Like, let, cause let me get to the next hitter. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna yeah. hit a, a double. You gonna ground out. Let's get. Let's get to it right now. Like, <laughs> save as many pitches as possible. So. <laughs> It's, it's super frustrating for somebody like me because I wasn't ever really trying to strike people out. I was just trying to get out. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the more pitches for me, the worse. See, that was a strike right there. Yeah. And is it, like, is it a matter of like the more pitches the batter takes, the more the the more likely it goes in their favor? Like the more they see, they're like, yo, I'm probably going to smack the, one of these out the park. Or? Yeah, you just kind of run out of options, especially with really good hitters. You know what I'm saying? Like if you've got like, well, Manny, you know, Manny Ramirez is one of the best right-handed hitters ever. So if he if he gets into a long at bat with you, I mean, you might as well just throw him a fastball down the middle and just stop wasting yeah. him and let him hit a home. You know what I'm saying? Because he's he's already seen everything you've got. And as soon as you throw something in the strike zone, it's, it's, he's going to hit it pretty hard. You know what I mean? Joe Girardi, sixth season as a manager. 
that's got to be annoying. I always thought that was annoying. Like the, the, the cut to the manager, the game's going on. Yeah, like come on. Man. <laughs> He's like, yeah, had our uh, gabagool with some uh, cheese before the game. Uh, you know, my wife is doing good. Uh, just fixed my garage door. How about also, you, they're they're down by seven. Like I'm sure he doesn't want to be interviewed right now. <laughs> we getting beat up right now. I don't want to talk to you right now. Like I got. They're like, Joe, you're getting your ass kicked. How's it feel? Like, that's <laughs> Oh, uh, man, look at Larry. Yeah. He looked young, too. Yeah. Joe, John, <laughs> Joe came back and was like, what's the score now? They're like, it's the same. He's like, oh, man. <laughs> He's like, yo, how you feel about this dude on the mound right now? You I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's o and it's only the fourth. We down seven runs. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's right? restful. I could never super manage, man, ever. This is super stressful, bro. Literally, literally, like, if I was at Yankee Stadium, we would be inside in the Delta Lounge at the bar, going hard, <laughs> just trying to get it right. <laughs> Probably not even, not even watching the field, just pouring them back. Man, I'll be having chicken fingers in my pockets with two headies, like, yeah. <laughs> Can't Rosenthal. Yeah, yeah. Really. Uh, just rolled out of bed with that hair, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> he got quarantine here with no quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I need to see a score a run or something, bro. Like, come on. Let's get, let's get, a, like, let's get a, two, a couple dudes on base or something. Back to the here you go. Oof. And the worst part is because this is Yankees Red Sox, no matter even if you're not watching the game, you have to keep looking at your phone and checking the updates because you know something's uh -huh. gonna change. You know it's not gonna end 7-0. Uh oh. They probably hitting 415 uh -oh. on the season in this game. <laughs> this is yeah. just, just bananas. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> See now like the shadows are good because they both in the shade. Right. right, so now it's fair. When the hitter's in the shade, then that's when you get the advantage. But now that they're both in the shade, it's fine. Ooh, cool, cool. How do you pitch Poppy, though? Like, D different. You know what I'm saying? Different. In, in, at Yankee Stadium, <clears throat> I can throw them away. I can throw them uh, fastballs away and my slider away. Here, I always had to throw them in because I didn't want them hitting balls off the monster. So anyway, I always pitch them in, and I would even try to throw my slider a little more in just to get him. If he's going to go deep, I would need to make him pull it and, like, earn it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he just flip you off the monster, and that would just drive me nuts. So I never threw him away when I was pitching to him in, uh, in Fenway. All right. It was, always, it was always in, and then I would throw him away at home. So, I mean, he picked up on it sometimes, but that was just mm -hmm. always my game plan. And did you have like an individual game plan for each player, each in a, at bat, or was it just like cer certain players you had to have special pitchers ready for? It was just certain players. Uh, for the most part, like, I, you know, when I was younger, I was what I was. I threw hard and I had a good slider and a good changeup. As I got older, it, I was, I mean, it was the same thing. I threw a cutter, backdoor slider, and my two seam. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it wasn't like on my side, I didn't watch a lot of video. It wasn't a lot of game plan. It wasn't a lot of, a lot of stuff, a lot of that stuff for me. I just relied on the catcher and what I knew I could do. I always tried to pitch to my strengths, more so to try to make up stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I can hit fastballs good. Well, I mean, he gonna get this, he gonna get mine today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> what happened to him? Who is this? Oh, <laughs> they change already? Yeah, speaking, speaking of who's this, like if, if they get a dude that they just called up and you've seen him for the first time, so you don't know his strengths, weaknesses, or, is, or, or you, do you get like a scouting report on him before or? I report, but I always felt like I had the advantage. If they've never seen anything that I throw, they've never seen the ball come, coming out of my hand, you can watch it on video all you want, but like when I get out there, it's different. So right. I felt like I had the advantage. And, I, and, and again, I would just pitch to my strengths. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever I'm good at is what you're going to get. So no matter if, if that's your strength or not, like I, I'm coming right at you with my stuff. That was a strike. I think everything is a strike, by the way. <laughs> I mean, you're a pitcher. <laughs> I'm crazy in the dugout. I mean, I got through out of, I got through out of four games without even like being on the field. Like I was <laughs> just just be there. 
Well, first pitch of the game a couple years ago in Toronto, I got threw out. Like, first pitch of the game. <laughs> Why? What'd you do? Did you just, did you just yell that was a strike? I just started yelling, and the umpire was like, we ain't gonna have that today. And I, you know, I jumped him back crazy, and he threw me out. And I was oh, just man. like, how does that here anyway? I just went back upstairs and took a nap, like. <laughs> so wait, when you get thrown out, you have to, you can't stay in the dugout, right? You gotta. I'm here, so it's the best thing ever for me. Like, I got an excuse to be up here on this couch all day. Yeah, you got the day off. <laughs> I just earned myself a day off. Oh, man. Oh, uh, look at Drew. Yep. Drew! Drew's a beast, bro. Mm-hmm. Remember that. He's got a 16-year-old son that's a monster, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, y'all be yeah. Him pretty soon. Can't wait to see these uh these baby Yankees. Right? It'll be great. <laughs> and it's what, you know, it's what? <laughs> I just went boogum. <laughs> Yo. Oh. Ow. Ooh. Yo, you see? It stops. Yo, don't skip leg day, my G. Look at Bobby <laughs> laughing at him. <laughs> oh. Yo. Bobby. Let's see what Drew does here. I feel like Drew might go deep right here. Let's start it off. Because so. that's I'm how it starts. It. We only need one. Oh, no, that ain't it. Nope, oh, that ain't man. it. Oh, man. Check him out. You know, I couldn't even tell you who this dude is on the mound right now for the Red Sox. Nah, I think that's still Dubois, though, right? Oh, so oh that's it. Was this huh? Ichiro? He, was... he, he threw a no hitter that day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Six, yeah. Six. Okay, yeah. wow. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Russell Martin. <laughs> Yo, he looks wild different with, with no facial hair, though. No facial hair, he looks crazy. <laughs> he was one of the best catches I ever threw to, though. Yes, he was amazing when you guys used to he could position, chemistry there. He could position his body to, like, steal strikes. Like, if I was going into a righty, he mm -hmm. could serve his body over to, like, so almost like blocking the umpire. Hey. Put it in his chest, he would call it a strike, and it'd be, like, this far off the plate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was a good – he was good at, like, uh, Blocking strikes, like you said, yeah. Just super it was weird. Okay. It was weird because I remember other catchers were unable to do it. Like the ball would just get around them, and he was just like, boom, he got it. He was really good. And then we got McCann right after. He was really good too. He was great. Mm -hmm. So Cece, they're saying you might have to bounce soon, so we gotta sadly wrap you up, my guy. But thank you for joining us on here. Of course, appreciate it. Hey, Sam, we thank ready, you, man. We got the hot ready. on deck. <laughs> All right, we got. You gotta say at least for this this at bat. Yeah, we, gotta, we need the good luck. I'll stay to oh, the end. I'll stay to the end of this inning. See if we score a run. Cool, cool. At this point, if it's Red Sox Yankees and we're losing this much, I gotta start going with the good luck charms. I might go <laughs> for like I might go for like the 2003 World Series cap that I have that's wild, old, and dusty. Might throw on the Mariano uh, shirt jersey. I have an A Rod jersey. I have an A Rod jersey that every girl I've ever dated thinks is disgusting because it has the wild mustard stain right here. But it was from 09 when he hit against the, the reliever for the Twins. Oh, uh, Joe Nathan. Yes. And yep. I, I I got so excited, I spilled the mustard on there, and I'm like, I'm never washing it out. So I bust that out every now and then. Oh, Laura Nunez. We're a young Mooney right here. Mooney. Okay. Yeah, I knew Mooney was going to be good because they would bring him up and he would always get started to get like against like Verlander and all the other great pitchers and he would go two for three, three for four against all those yeah. guys. Mm -hmm. This guy can hit good pitching, he can hit anybody, you know what I'm saying? Like he's, he's yeah. a, let's, let's keep him. He didn't Who's care about the names, he was just like, he was one of those players, he was just like, I'm just crushing it if you hit, you give me a chance at that. Those are always a, fun at bats to watch too. Yeah, my favorite thing was like you said, like it's he would go two for three, three for four, but like he it, it wouldn't even be like yo, he smacked up five hundred foot home run. It's just like bro, he hit a double in a gap when we needed it yeah. type of situation, you know. Or he just ran just a little extra hard on one play. The difference maker. Mm -hmm. Yo, sometimes too, like when you start this game, <clears throat> when you start a game like this, and it's seven nothing, you got a big league. It's hard to pitch in these games a little bit. Like, yeah. you, you lose, like, the ability to start pitching. Like, you just start, you know, trying to throw strikes and get outs, and then 
against good teams, you know, sometimes they can put a rally together and, you know. It's, oh, you're saying if uh, if you have the seven run lead, if you got the seven run lead. Yeah, got you. Yeah, oh, so you, you need that the game plan. Oh. Yeah, now he's just trying to get you trying to get out of there. Yeah, I always wanted a closer game until like the six. If you like, if it's mm -hmm. like two to nothing to the six, and we're up, and then y'all score eight runs, then it's fine. You know what I'm saying? That's but if good. Yeah. Two to nothing in the second, then it's like you kind of like you're like, oh, I can give up. You know what I mean? Like you can yeah. lose the fit. You see that a lot with some of the closers. It's like if it's if they got a close and it's like three two, they're good. But then if it's just like they come in in a weird like four two and they have like maybe one one home run they could give away, they're not as locked in. Yeah. That's always frustrating. Or even if you put a man in the eighth, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if it's not the ninth, you put him in a little earlier, then it's, uh, it gets it gets crazy too. That's, all, yeah, that's always scary to watch too, because if you got to bring your closer in at the eight, it's like, ah, oh, what's going on? Uh -huh. yeah, what's good. going on? I get a little nervous when I see Chappie in like top of the eighth. I'm like, ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> top, of, top of the eight with no outs, you're like, ah, oh, what's going on here, guy? What's going on? Who pitched in the ninth? <laughs> Meanwhile, when we had Mariano Rivera, they were like, coming in, Mariano, you just start your car. You're like, all right, yeah. we, we go home. Yeah. Start cleaning up your section. We go home in six pitches. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jeter with the single in the first? Okay. Maybe he starts the rally. Two out Come on, rally. Jeter. Come on, Gita. Oh, God. Oof. He was trying to go deep right there. Yeah. Hell, yeah. he put everything in that one. He's like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he saw it, too. Shout out to all the young kids on the MLB Instagram, <laughs> constantly slandering Derek Jeter. If I ever catch, if I ever look up your IP addresses, I'm coming for all oh, y'all. Oh, it's quiet for you. We jumping you. <laughs> Man. Sheesh. Yo, they always talk about like how I, I, they should just, they need a new stadium, same way. Yeah. They need a new well, stadium. Uh, as, as a fan, I was like, yo, it's super cramped in here. And I, you said the dugout, the, the actual bullpen and everything and all that stuff. It's like the locker room is tiny. Well, I mean, they try to do what they can, but it would be nice to to be able to, to you know, have a, some new, like something new. Like Yankee Stadium is as historic as anything. We got a new stadium, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. Ours I watched a documentary once. Apparently, there's nowhere for them to build a new stadium in that part of Boston. So they'd have to do something to the actual stadium and they can't really do that but they're like yo it's know, 8 thousand years old baby we can't move it it's gonna crumble man turn it into a museum <laughs> build it somewhere no facts just share Gillette Stadium with the Patriots <laughs> <laughs> yo dude brought us in there doing work okay yeah, you gotta be like 75, 80 pitches by now, though. Shoot, mm -hmm. he's, he's he's feeling good. He's cruising. He's trying to like get when you when you pitch and you in that type of zone and you just like, oh, okay. Hey, God will find it. Here we okay. go. Here we go. Keep Nudie. running. Go ahead, run, push it, Nudie. He's like, yo, my my friend says is gonna talk greasy about me tomorrow if I don't get this get the third. <laughs> 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 All right, we got runners of first and third, two outs. What are they showing a clicker for? That's what they, I do. That's the pitch count? <laughs> for every pitch, so he knows the count. Oh, nice. Okay, he's, he's at 83 pitches. Okay. That's not bad. 85 balls. He need one out to get a win. This is when he's stressed out. He's stressing a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yep. He needs those five innings. Yeah. Come on, Swish. Yo, Swish was the first, I think Swish was the first baseball player or maybe even athlete with Twitter. Oh, what? I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. Because he definitely had a Twitter personality before Twitter. Oh, for sure. He's up there with the pack lip and all that. He's, he's That's big baseball energy right there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, yo. That's that. I grew up, I grew up in Missouri. <laughs> Play, I hit the... <laughs> Oh man, 
Who's dad playing the big league? Uh, Swish. Was it Steve Swisher? Yeah. Was his dad? Yeah. 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 That's the thing too. Like a lot of these dudes, like you got Tatis Jr., Vlad Jr. Mm -hmm. Like, and these dudes are nice, man. Yeah. Like, is it just, is it just like genetic? Is it like, like with just with just on? Are you getting in there and like, yo, coaching them up and? Or is it just like, yo, you leave it to the to, to his coach? No, nah, I mean, now that I'm home, I coach him. You know what I'm saying? Like, we play catch. He's throwing bullpens and stuff. But, I mean, it's, it's them growing up in the clubhouse and mm -hmm. just genetics and what they see. Like, I mean, from the time he was able to, to, like, walk, it was baseball. Like, in the living room, you know, in the backyard, taking him to the stadium. So, like, they literally just grow up in clubhouses and they – they know how to act around, you know, other professionals and stuff. So it just they have a slight advantage in that in that they they've seen it all already, you know. Right. All right, seven zero, bottom of the fifth, ninety right. pitch count. You know what I mean? This is good for Phelps, though. That he's he. he oh. Uh oh. Ooh, that's that's in. Is that in? No. Off the, Off the wall. Well, it's good then that the Red Sox don't got, got their name on the jersey because my man's name wouldn't fit on the jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm upstairs eating right now at this point at their Yeah. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Two thousand two on McDonald's. Phelps. <laughs> oh, Jeeps DH. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when I saw that in the graphic, I thought they messed up the graphic. I was like, <laughs> I was like that, oh, yeah, he was like DH and this stuff. So Nooney playing short? <clears throat> oh, he's playing short. Yeah, they got him in short and uh Robin. Robbie second, he went third. He thought he had it. He thought he had it. Oh, he did get it. Cause he did have it. Damn. Yo. Yo, what is, yo. What is this game? Yo. Yo. I, yo, I know. Nine zero. I know, listen, I know we said we don't want to pick the game, but man, good. I gotta see my kids after this. This guy was watching some. <laughs> this is like someone coming to you like yeah you know that bar you really like yeah it's not it's never reopening after the coronavirus sorry <laughs> like this is not happy yeah. but you know what this is baseball and the good part of this you know tomorrow the cause of Mike Francesa are gonna be wild. Oh, they're man. gonna be they're gonna they're gonna be doing trades. I can't even uh, uh Mike, I'm gonna hang up and listen. How about we trade uh Jeter for uh LeBron James? I'll hang up and listen. Oh no. Man. Oh no. Oh. Uh, Swish got it. Swish got it. <laughs> Sheesh. Nine zero. Woo! Time to eat this out, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, still got the no hitter going. The miracle went first. <laughs> Who was that that pitcher that he had the no hitter and then the last play they called it safe? They said uh, the for the Tigers, remember? Yeah. Oh, I think his name. But that was crazy. They actually did a documentary on that and like about the umpire how he like apologized and it's like to this day, he feels terrible because he basically he says he feels like he stole the no-hitter from the guy. It was a perfect game, too, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Man. You hate to see it. Oh, look at Shockey. Uh-oh. Is it wild seeing all these dudes, like... Yeah, like, I played with... Years back? <laughs> yeah, I played with him in Cleveland for a long time. Yo, speaking of that, you posted a flick of you and Bartolo Colon back in the day with the holding the ace cards. Yeah. Yo, and that oh. hit me right right here. Cause I was like, yo, that's my guy CZ, that's my uncle Bartolo. We like <laughs> Yo, I this man is special. It yep. might have been yesterday or one like lately with the the what was it, the anniversary of him hitting that home run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
But I wanted to be like him so bad when I was young, because like he was the guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I, I just did everything he did. Like I played with him for I think two years at the beginning, then he came to uh, New York. But when I was, I mean, I was 20 years old when I first got a chance to play with him, and I just literally followed him around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How many teams did he end up playing on? Oh man, together? he's been on like almost every team. Yeah, every team. Bro. He went from us to to the Expos. And then he got, and then he went to the Angels and won uh, the Cy Young. Mm -hmm. And then after the Angels, was he on the Mets for a little while too? Oh yeah, he was on. Yeah, the, yeah for sure. He was on the Mets. On the Mets. I forgot where he went after the Angels. Though. Detroit, not Detroit, man. That's the Pedroia. That's that's in the park. It's in the park. Yeah. You know, it's wild. You can kind of hear it in the crowd. They're, they're not comfortable with this lead. They know something's up. They don't, they're not clapping that loud. Yeah, they're, not, they're not super boisterous. They're, they're like, uh. And I would oh, man. You know every day, man. You what? I miss watching his swing every day. He was so right? good. Right? Oh, man. Yeah, bro. It's a sweet swing, bro. The way he would drop the bat after hitting a home run. Oof. Teach it. His dad, I mean, his dad played too, so you know, he's one of those mm -hmm. guys who grew up in, in clubhouses. And you know, you can't teach what he does, man, like the way he hits. Yeah. So, yeah, not nah, you like you were saying, he went from the Indians to the Expos to the Sox, the White Sox, the Angels, the Red Sox, the White Sox, the Yankees, the A's, the Mets, the Braves, the Twins, the Rangers. Wow, wow. Right. <laughs> That's a lot of teams, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. It's forever. Right. So the game before That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the Red the, Sox. He's in the, now. the Red Sox were one for ten with runners in scoring position in the game before this. So Oh, and this is okay, this was after a night game. All right, all right. It's one of those weekend series probably. Yeah, so then we played Friday night, we had this Saturday, four o'clock probably, and then the eight mm -hmm. Sunday night uh baseball, eight o'clock. Yeah. Back to New York at six in the morning. <laughs> you can you you can you can tell who turned up <laughs> and who just went home and went to bed. Now, you know, Listen, we not turning up and, like when we played there because it, the games are always so big. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it really, it was like this for six hours and then you go home and you're exhausted and wake up. You know, you, know, you know what I mean? That's it. I've said it once. I said it to Mike Francesa. There is nothing like a Friday night New York Red Sox Yankee game. When you, the energy there, oof. That's like that's it could be like the beginning of the season it still feels like the playoffs Playoffs, yeah. Yeah. and I, I didn't realize that when i first got here and then you know but i feel like all of those get like you play in your first red sox yankee game like you like i got to open up the stadium and different things i felt like all of that set me up for the playoffs you know what i'm saying yeah. like yep. I got to the playoffs i had already played so many big games in my head that mm -hmm. it was just like this is what we do you know what i'm saying yep. just another game yeah. just another game And then like how all the channels, like even if you don't know anything about the rivalry, they're gonna tell you everything you need to know over the course of the game. They're gonna show Don Zimmerman getting thrown down. They're gonna they gonna hit all the angles. Oh, everything. <laughs> you just right in it, like you you right in it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, right. The hardest part though was like one. after after 04, they had to bring that up every Yankee game, like the how we just. Ooh, that 04 was hard to live, man. <laughs> I don't feel like for you guys, if y'all would have won the World Series in 03. But in 03? And then coming back, having 3 1 lead, then losing again, the like, I feel mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Oof. Oof. We must I feel, I feel like this is this what everybody was hating on A Rod, or, or is this. Nah. It's not yeah. yet. Not yet. Oh, yep. oh, seven. Did I say 07? This is this is uh, that was 2015, I think, when he got, had all that trouble. I think he was fine. Yeah. 12. Because I was about to say, I was like, bro, he's a he's a hell of an analyst, man. Like, mm -hmm. one of the smartest baseball people I've ever been around. Like, I don't know. And then when he kind of got like when people started hating on A Rod. Yankee fans was just like, all right, we're just going to embrace him and be jerks. 
Remember that, that was that was a moment because people was like, "How dare you root for him?" But I remember I had on the shirt and I was just standing up like, "What's what's uh, up, yeah, bro?" Yeah, what's poppin'? What's poppin'? <laughs> yeah, he's on this side. <laughs> oh, got him. Uh oh, you go nine one. Is that all of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a whole yeah. lot. That, yeah. All right, all right, Tex. Here you go. Now I feel like I can get off. We had to score one round while we were, while I was on, man. But... <laughs> you're, you're, you're a good luck charm, CC. <laughs> now, now you open the gates. <laughs> open the gates. Yeah, Tex. Look at that. You know he's going to hit a home run when, when he's doing the face like he's trying to hold it apart? He got the yeah, crazy eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he goes crazy eyes, it's, it's out of here. And I love at Yankee Stadium where if somebody like hits a home run against the Yankees, and the crowd's like, throw the ball back. And the person's like, no, no. And you, the whole, the whole, you just got to heckle them the whole game. I would never throw the ball back, by the way, if I was a fan. I'm telling you. You know what? It makes it so, it's, it's so rare, dog. Like It's so rare, but it's just, it? it's just peer pressure. Yeah. You're only throwing back because the whole stadium's like, boo you. I'm not throwing right back. I'm sorry. If y'all get one, y'all can throw it back. Really great day here at Yankee Stadium. Well, that young man is that his day made by Brett Gardner. Look at the reaction. Fan for life. First baseball. I bet that's the first. That's a nice way to spend your anniversary. That was a happy man. It's got to be fun. Oh, that is hat. nicely done. And how about the elation? Pure bliss. <laughs> All right, I can get off. I feel like I can, I feel like I'm good now. Like you good, you good. You, you made it happen. Yo, she made it Yankee happen. Legacy. We hope we come back. Bounty for joining us, man. Thank you. I got CC. First ballot Hall of Fame or we riot. You know what it is. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> All right, I see y'all. All right, take, take care, CC. Hey. Also, shout out to Charles. Is it Charles Hanson Jr.? I forgot his name. He Charles Christian Jr. He was on the Yankees. Charles Carsten. Charles, Carsten. Yeah. No, wait. That's, isn't that CeCe? Carsten. Carsten. Yeah. CeCe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, no, the, Al, no Al, Harf, Al Harrington Jr. Or was he a Nick? He was a Nick. <laughs> he was a Nick. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting them oh, confused. But Jerry Hairston. Jerry Hairston. Jerry Hairston Jr. Hairston. Thank you, Mero. Thank Hairston. you. Thank you. That's why we are the new Mike and the Mad Dog. <laughs> Shout out to him because um, he made an error that messed up. What's his name? Uh, he had a no hitter going. Uh, the guy on the ah, why am I blanking? The pitcher from the, the from New Orleans for the Yankees, one of the core four, Andy Pettit. Oh, okay. Andy and he, Pettit he had a no hitter yeah, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and he the ball got past him. And then the whole game spiraled out after that. But you know what? Because that's what happens. You know what? If you have a no-hitter going, you give up that first hit, it's, it's crap shoot after that. It's like, no! The pitcher don't even want to pitch anymore. He's like, he's just, Think he's about just it. lobbing the ball to the plate. You had a no-hitter going. Now you're just going to go home with maybe just a regular win. <laughs> Yo, Miro, look at the back. My man in the suit put on the hat. He put on the, the Beats by Dre. Oh! The noise canceling. He's like, I don't want to hear this game. <laughs> All right, Pedroia has had 17 at bats in this game. Instead of listening to the game, he's listening to Sweet Caroline. He's getting ready for the seventh. <laughs> also, for the record, if you are at Fenway Park and they're singing Sweet Caroline live, that is one of the scariest things to ever experience. Oh yeah, that is not a baseball it. appropriate song. Yeah, no. Go to the bathroom. Go to leave the stadium. <laughs> Think about it, because like, what do we 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 sing? Uh, well, actually. Since they got rid of Enter Sandman, Yankee Stadium hasn't really bringing the heat. Uh, song wise. Well, 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 New York, New York. Got Cotton Eye Joe. Staple. Yeah. Where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Cotton Eye Joe. Ninja. We got that. No. We got It's uh, Fun to Say at the Wild. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, that, those, but those are two strong entries. Ah, Mooney. Those aren't strong entries. We need new songs. We need <laughs> Yankee Stadium needs scarier songs. Actually, they started playing uh, the instrumental to Shook one. Hey, Dustin. Hey, why Dustin and I got the same haircut? And he's not in the corner. Yo. Yeah. 
I think Yo. people think he's going bald, but that's from every time he did a head first slide. He lost a little bit of hair. <laughs> Yo, for real. Oh, my man got the McDonald's arches hairline. Man. I mean, you know. I'm not you can tell, talk, but... you know how you know the Yankees are getting swept? They're getting, like, they're losing bad. They're doing full screen interviews with other players during the middle oh, of the yeah. game. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. While he's at that? bat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just got the mic to him while he's swinging. He's like, yeah, so, yeah, now nah, we mopping these dudes. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> We're going to bring on a reliever soon. <laughs> so it's the sixth inning. Dustin Pedroia does this weird hop every time the pitcher releases the ball. I didn't know this. I was on the side, and then they did a compilation on YouTube. Check it out. Of hops? If you're really bored. He does, like, this weird, like, hop before he, like, makes a play or does something. Oh, it's, it's, it's weird. That's why he never be a Yankee. Out. Yeah. Was it Keep Dustin Pedroia? Uh, I think Dustin Ooh, Pedroia nice. go third on the Yankee race. Go home, go home right? Yeah, he, he'd be the guy to do it. I don't see I don't see Poppy stealing home. <laughs> Listen, if Poppy steals home, there's a bigger problem. <laughs> No, it was in 09, Jacoby Ellsbury stole home for Boston. Oh, home. Off of Andy well, Pitt. Yeah. Right. And then he came to the Yankees and stole money from the Yankees. <laughs> and shout out to all of you who are like, Jesus, you keep mentioning games that happened in 09, and we know there were no TVs invented back then, so how did you watch that? <laughs> all right, maybe, maybe, that, maybe that rally wasn't... Can we, we get CC back in here? <laughs> bring some, bring Guardian in. Here. Some... <laughs> we just need to, we need the rescue, we need to rally CC. Have CC face on a, on a jumbotron and yeah, yes, Yankee Stadium. Yo, yo, the funny thing is that he, CC was just asking about this guy. <laughs> And look at your base. Your base stat line is zero 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 zero. But across the board, look at it this way. He has nowhere to go but up. So, I like that kind of. I like that worldview. You gotta have that worldview. You don't. Okay. What type of hot dogs were those? Uh, Sabret. Hey, you know what I'm saying the long ones. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, my God! Hey. <laughs> Actually, that's the They're actual not, advertising. <laughs> that's the actual advertising slogan for. Like, hey, the long one. <laughs> All right, Ooh. we are going to the top of the seventh. Top of the seventh, y'all. Down All nine right. one. Mm. Nine one. You're Let's watching see. the Let's See what happens. The Bodega Boys watch Red Sox Yankees, sponsored by who? Mm -hmm. WB Mason. Who else? But That's WB right. Mason. Do you want a sexy delivery guy to deliver your green tea and get everyone huh? in your office all hot and bothered? Yeah. Call WB Mason. The WB Mason commercials make no sense because everyone's just ordering office supplies they don't know so they can ogle the delivery guy. <laughs> You're like, Cheryl, we don't need any more computer paper. Or she's like, he's Stop. Hot. He's hot. Cheryl, there's six rooms full of toner. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. We're out of green tea again. Can we get same delivery, same day delivery? Is it possible? And send a brolic guy. <laughs> like Cheryl, it's Sunday. You're not even supposed to be in the office. <laughs> I, I live here now. <laughs> uh, also, shout out, to, shout out to PC Richard with the whistle every time someone strikes out. Yes. It took me like two seasons to figure out what was going on. I was like, what is that? <laughs> See, look at our ball, look at our ball person. With the swift reflexes, catching that little foul on a hop. Okay, they got um, my uncle Esteban in to pitch. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's clearly one of the cavemen from the Geico commercial. <laughs> wow! When he brings up Drew, he's like, "Yo, stop it! I got just, I just got run up by a caveman." He's like, "Wow!" <laughs> they hate to see it. I mean, at this point in the game, if you're losing by eight and it's like the seventh inning, you just want to wrap it up. Like, <laughs> think about it in your head. You're like, if I do a rally, it might go 13 innings. 
But if I wrap this yeah. up, I, just, I got home, you know what I'm saying? I might have something out there I want to smoke. I might have like a whole yeah, man. fridge. I got stuff on a DVR. I could go home to my mansion. <laughs> That's why I wouldn't be a good sports player. Because I'd always be like, I'm going home to my mansion. I don't need this. I want to go home. Like, I don't want to do this. Oh, you guys want to all go to Cheesecake Factory together? Uh, uh, I got one in my house. Just come yeah. over. They're like, Jesus, this is your fifth time this season you're getting Tommy John surgery. I'm like, I, I fall. Uh, listen, Ooh, my Tommy nope. and my John nope. are very delicate. Be that Tommy John. <laughs> Looney come back. Come on, Noonie. Come on, Noonie. Crank one. Let's get some excitement. All right. If we're losing by this much, and it's the seventh inning, and I'm watching at a bar, at this point, I'm looking around like, who can I fight? Who am I going to fight? <laughs> who, who, who's, fight? <laughs> who's getting Who's getting this anger? <laughs> Just listen to other people's <laughs> conversations and waiting for them to get a fact wrong, and I'm like, that's not even true. <laughs> You're going to fight a guy like a like a St. Louis Cardinals hat for no reason? Like... He's like, what am I, I? I'm not even in this game. I'm not even watching. You think the Cardinals are better than the Yankees? They're like, I wasn't even talking to you. I wasn't even talking. I... <laughs> How dare you say that about Jesse Barfield? I'll come down there. Don't make me come Who? down there. No, Jesse no, Barfield. I was talking about. No, he so, was popular no, no, in '86. No, ju no, Jesse Barfield is the guy that works in the Counts Payable with me. I was talking about him. Oh, yeah, all right. Uh, it's all right. Calm down. Security. Bartender, give me another stuff. order of tater tots. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you. Red Sox Yankee games are the type of games that get to the point where you start ordering stuff off the menu that wasn't even on. Like, oh, you're not yeah. even supposed to. You're like, let me get the. Uh, Garlic okay. bacon tater tots? Are these just. These are just french fries and they're just covered in gravy? Yeah, yeah. Just bring them here. Bring them here. Yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Uh, well, yeah, no, just done. I don't care if they, no, they don't have to be crispy. Just yeah. just put it in a bucket. Remember that new food option they have at yes uh, Yankee Stadium? You get the chicken, just mad chicken fingers yes. and mad and like in a soda, like <laughs> safe. There you go. Okay. Okay, we got uh, Russell and Looney on base. All right. Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. Okay. Two men on, one out. DJ at the plate. Top of the I remember seven. this plate. Because this is where Derek Jeter hits a grand slam that's worth seven. Uh, don't ask how that happens. He's Jeter. Yes. He's Everything Jeter. Possible. He's magic. He's possible. a unicorn. Yeah, he's about to definitely cream one off of uh, Esteban over here. Bang him up! <laughs> Bang him up! <laughs> All right. Come on, Jeets. Yeah, Jeets. Let's go. That's low. Okay, go on. I love when you can hear like a fan very clearly. <laughs> very clearly. <laughs> All right. Focus, buddy. Ooh. Ooh. You don't do that to Derek Jeter. Not at all. Not at all. Remember they, they were Jeter. they made that they were gonna make that one of the rules that if you hit Derek Jeter with a ball, you're automatically suspended for thirteen for games. Life. Should have been. Should have been made. <laughs> Inde suspended indefinitely. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't know uh, this Red Sox pitcher actually used to pitch uh, in the NBA. Oh, this guy got the whole headset. Is that mm -hmm. like a lawnmower no noise proofing thing? Nah, he got the antenna on it. Because remember, like, this is. <laughs> He's like probably listening to the play by play of the game. Oh, the radio. He's old school. Mm hmm. On the radio. Uh, uh, 
Come on, Jeeks. 3-0. There's your count. Takes. Oh. All right. All Let's right. Let's go. Bases loaded. One out. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Got ducks on the pond. Let's go, bro. This is a part of the game where you've been quiet all game, and you can stand uh -huh. up as a Yankee fan and be a jerk because they're already losing. They're already losing. Yeah. yeah. This, this, is what, this, this is what the tweets start flowing. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have a little more. You've been, hide, you've been hiding from the timeline the whole time, and now you might hop out with an all cap. Ah. Let's go, Yankees. Yeah, Let's go. Geez. Let's go. 27 <laughs> rings, bro. That's my captain. And that's when the Red Sox fans are like, oh, wow, here come all the Yankee fans. Where have you been for the last seven innings? And you're like, 27 <laughs> rings, bro. <laughs> exactly where you're going to be for the last three. Oh. ta -da! Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. Nick Swish with the grass slam. How you like that? Ah, ah, ah. Swish now. Ah, ah, ah. Y'all sick. They told us not to curse. They told us not to curse. You're lucky they told us not to curse. Hit me right in the vein with that. Ow. Do the arm. Shelly Duncan arm smashes. Let's ah, go. Ah, ah. And look, look at them. Look how casual they are. Yeah. Also because they're still down by four. But <laughs> take it. Let's yeah, go. buddy. This is the part where I, I, I lift my head off the bar and I'm like, oh, oh, wow. Oh, yo, oh, hey, oh, hey. Oh, we got a game. We got a game going. Turn the music off and put the game through the speakers. Come on. <laughs> The manager's like, so, uh, yeah, he just, he just, he just cracked what you do. So, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you, uh, might want to stop throwing that ball. Manager comes over while I'll start casting. He's like, all right, new plan. How about, um, you throw strikes. This time yeah. your ball actually, you know. Is in the strike zone. Uh, maybe you get a couple outs for us here. You know what? What if your, your manager comes like a wild jerk? He's like, oh, I must've made a mistake because uh, apparently when I came here last time, you heard me say throw them home runs. So let's try that again. This time yeah. throw strikes, okay, pal? Uh, you know what? My mistake. I penciled you in that pitcher. Mm -hmm. You're obviously not a pitcher. I'm sorry. That was my mistake. Come on, Cano. Yeah. Double. Ooh. That's, oh, good. That was nasty. Uh, he got some stuff, but it's inconsistent. Yeah, and it's, yeah, he's, the control is not there. Damn. Consistency is more important than control. Because you can have the most amazing control on a ball, but if you're not consistent, if you keep throwing, like, stay on, if you get that ball to land where you want it for the first pitch and the third pitch, that's beautiful. That second pitch, that's the one that goes out, you know, that out could, the park. That could be your undoing. And that's why CC was saying uh, Bartolo could still be in the league because that man knows how to throw a strike. That's right. Because he doesn't bring a lot of funny stuff when he throws the ball. It's very, very no, simple, very fundamental. Location, location, yep. location. Yep. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Off Look at it. It's at Let's go. Looky, looky. Oh, my hey. God. Looky, looky. All right. <laughs> my guy. My guy can know. Off the monster. Crowd sound to come away. Crowd is sound to come kind of way. Uh huh. Now here comes Bobby Valentino to tell you to slow down. Wee 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 wee. You're giving the lead away. Giving the lead away. Lead away. <laughs> oh. Here comes a large man from Lawrence, Massachusetts, to take them out. <laughs> yeah. I never understood why they why they. While they jog out, like save your energy. Take your I time, very, huh? I would very casually stroll, like. <laughs> Yo. I'm like, oh, there's a time limit. No. Okay. Swisher. He's like, yeah, I'll crank that. Like soldier boy. Mm -hmm. You. Who? Wait till I tweet that in ten years. <laughs> that is a very strong sideburn. How you strong? Yo. His type. His sideburn looks like it's about to kick a soccer ball. Yo, his cyber looks like I I could do an alley off his like <laughs> you <laughs> Tony Hawk who Alex Rodriguez Yeah let's go 
there's a restaurant across the street from Fenway Park that has Alex Rodriguez coasters and urinal cakes. His face uh, is on the. Uh, and the whole time I was there, I was like, I am not peeing on Alex Rodriguez. So the whole time I was like making sure my stream didn't go on the urinal cake. <laughs> and so me and my shorty at the time were there decked out in Yankees gear. We got terrible service at the bar. We couldn't get like, we got one bar, we got one beer. They wouldn't give us any more beer. They would give us menus. And then finally this bar back comes and he's like, bro, I moved up here when I was 10. I hate the Red Sox. Everyone hates you because you have on Yankee stuff. And I was like, oh, can you help us? And I was, he was like, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't think I'm a traitor. <laughs> I remember this old guy in the elevator because I had on a Sabathia jersey. And he was like, how can you wear that in the street? And I was like, sir, it's a, what's, what's, what does that mean? <laughs> like, my guy. Also, not a I was dictator like, jersey. Also, I was like, I strive to get to this old man's petty level. Okay, I respect that. He did not know me. He looked at me with such disgust. He looked at me like he wanted to spit on me because I had on pinstripes. And that's what a rivalry should be. Yeah. Russell Martin in the dugout right now. You could tell that he was playing in New York because that is a Dominican haircut if I've seen one. Julio, a guy named Julio cut his hair. Before he got he his hair cut two blocks away from Yankee Stadium. <laughs> He goes like, turn left at the courthouse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're doing that, yeah, what, that greatest part of the Red Sox Yankee game where a couple of Yankee fans in Fenway started Let's Go Yankees chant. And everyone gets outraged. This has to do like the much louder Let's yeah. Go Red Sox chant. Uh -huh. But that happened yeah. kind of at the same time. They're like, Let's Go Yankees. Let's Go Red Sox. <laughs> I'm like, I sure up like, let's go, Yankees! You got it, You find the one other Yankee fan at Fenway Park, and you point at him like, bro. Stop screaming at each other. Like, bro, bro we got this, bro. We got this. And every time the Yankees score, you stand up and you look at them like, yeah, bro. Yeah, we're killing them, bro. Do the air high five from different sections, like. Yes. <laughs> Nothing better than high five with people you don't know because of a home run. And you got to turn around, you got to high five a little kid, like, yeah. Yeah, you break his arm because he's so drunk. <laughs> yeah, right there, Timmy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. All right. Come on, Mark. Come Good on, Mark. Text. What is it? The corner for Mark. Hello, Mark. <laughs> oh, hello, Mark. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Ah, you bobbled that, bro. Uh, you booted it. Shout out to the greatest uh, baseball game ever made, MLB Power Pros, because if your character makes that mistake, they drop their head like this in shame to go. Uh, As it should be. <laughs> Woo! There we go! Woo! Wow, 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 wow! Get it out! Superman! Get it out of here! Let's go! How y'all feel? How y'all feel? Let's go! Third home run this season! Second one this game. Let us That's go. Right. It's Big Tex. Speaking yeah. of who, it's Big Tex. What's Mark up, Teixeira. guys? Mark Teixeira, Yankee legend, yes. joining us. Man, yes. I love I love watching videos of me hitting home runs, man. Let's keep doing this. I love yeah. it too, man. Yeah, I love it too. Oh. It's happened twice already. Mark, do you, you remember home run? How you doing, my guy? Really good, really good, man. I'm glad to see some baseball on. Oh, yeah, so are we. Also, man, we are cranked that one. You crushed that one. That hit no, the it was close time. You know what? That that ball, man. Because when you hit the ball at the monster, you never know how high it is. And I was just like, please go out, please go out, man. When you see that ball disappear over the monster, man, just a big smile. Best feeling in the world. Wow. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, we, earlier, oh, we, we were talking about we were talking about the the patented tax crazy eyes. When you're when you when you're yeah, yeah, like this. Yeah. <laughs> when you're when the ball inside and I'm like yo when you know it going eight thousand feet this you is gonna be a moonshot you know what's funny you could toss me like a bean bag in in a small room and as it's coming at me my eyes will still do that no right. matter what my <laughs> eyes like oh, man. My, 
my uh, my kids do it too. Like my my sons, I'm out playing like wiffle ball with them. They do the same thing. Same thing. Oh, that's gotta be nice. Oh, yeah. That was always an amazing thing. when you see the replay and you saw a text eyes get big. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that one's out of here. Oh, it's a fat, <laughs> he's fat locked, one. He's locked in. Oh. Uh, you guys have been enjoying this game? Oh, oh man, bro, bro. Yeah, right up until now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it was nine one, not so much. Now it's, little, it's getting better. Yeah, that was yeah, after Curtis. There we go, Grandy. So when Swish hit that home run, we're all we're all in the dugout. Like, wait a second, it's nine to five. We're into their bullpen. The bullpen's not that great. We got a chance mm -hmm. at this game. <laughs> uh -huh. So that was that was big. Yeah. How does it feel as know, a hitter though when you're uh, like it's like you know fifth, sixth inning and you're down nine one, and you don't know what's gonna happen, but then something like that happens. I mean, obviously, you, so, play, you feel like now you got a game. Yeah, you know the, the the fun thing about baseball is like you're gonna get your at bats no matter what. You can't run out the clock, and so you know in in, in football or basketball when you're down twenty points in the fourth quarter. It's like, you know, they're going to run out the clock. I'm not yeah. going to get the ball enough to actually score. But in baseball, it's 27 outs. So we always talked about, hey, guys, yeah, we're down by nine runs. Just don't give up any outs. So, yeah. like, almost almost be selfish. Like, I'm not getting out. And so if every single one of us says, okay, I'm going to get a hit or I'm going to drive in a run or whatever it might be, you know, you can build that momentum. And I think baseball is the easiest sport for comebacks because yeah. you get – 27 outs no matter what you cannot yeah, run yeah. out the clock yeah we were talking you remember about all these you remember all these red sox yankee games because they were so epic and long and just it was like so, a war so ev every one of these games was at least four hours mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, seriously. but but i tell you what man the fans is what made these games because listen like we we didn't hate the red sox players we hated the Red Sox, which meant their fans, the, the city, like we wanted the to beat logo, every, everything. We wanted to beat everybody. And so when you go into Fenway and those fans are booing you, every every step you take, they're booing. You. And you start getting hits, you start scoring runs. It's like, I don't necessarily want to beat the Red Sox team. Mm -hmm. I want to beat everyone around me. So stadium. Those games were so much fun, and I guarantee yeah. you. The Red Sox, when they come into Yankee Stadium, said the same thing. Like, yeah, I didn't hate, sure. you know, Mariano Rivera and Andy Pettit and Jorge Posada. I hated the, the stands, you know, the, the mm -hmm. you know, the bleacher creatures. That's creatures. who I hated. Oh, yeah. That's, so, oh, man. This, you were talking about the bullpen in this game, and we just we were just talking to CeCe. And as a hitter, making guys go deep in account, Throw a lot of pitches. Throw a lot of pitches. Is that a strategy that you guys went into, like a game like this? Like, let's no. get to the weak bullpen. Yes, no doubt. So, so I mean, I like. I think probably the first four years. This is 2012. My fourth year on the Yankees, we had a lineup that we felt like we were going to score ten runs. Like, yeah. like we had that lineup. Um, and so, if you if you went out and the, the starter, three, four, five innings was shutting you down, but we got his pitch count up. We knew we still had a chance to score runs. So Kevin Long, we, you know, he's a great hitting coach. We would talk about it all the time. Like, hey, listen, guys, this guy's got our number today, but make him work the count. Like, make him throw pitches because if we can get him to 100 pitches after five innings, we're going to go into the bullpen. And, and that's what we accomplished here against the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. Oof. See, that's the beauty of the Red Sox Yankee games. Even though at one point, you know, the score was 9-0. You know, at any point during a Red Sox Yankee game, it could all switch. It could all change. Yep. No numbers. Nothing is safe. No lead is safe, especially at Fenway. So, like the whole time knowing this, does that give you like a little extra drive when you're playing? It does. It does. Well, you know, anytime there's there's really no give up against the Red Sox. I mean, there's really no. You shouldn't ever be giving up. But like, you know, if we're playing against the Orioles in September, and they're 40 games out of first place. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's nine nothing, it's like, hey, you know, they had our number today. You know, no big deal. I guess the Red Sox, like, you're in Fenway. Those fans stay the whole game. You guys know. Oh that. yeah. They are. They stay and stay in the whole game. You know, uh -huh. we absolutely were saying we're still in this game. Like, we're we're gonna continue to fight because you know we got a chance to beat a team that you know they weren't good in 2012, but they're always our number one rival. We want to beat them. Always. Yeah. This was this was the Bobby Valentine year, if you guys remember. 
Oh, oh yeah. The box I, I, we I, only lasted I, one I, year. I, yes. I said, I was like, oh, he's not wearing the fake mustache this time. Oh, my gosh. That was, hilarious. That was, that was an interesting year for the Red Sox. Um, so, so what what has been what has been your favorite thing to watch about this game about this season? Um, you know, 2012, the players. You know, I, I see my man Grandy on first place. Yeah, oh, yeah. one of my we favorite teammates of all time, Curtis Granderson, Grandy man. Curtis Grandy. Love that guy. He was a great. Uh, he was one of those Yankees that you just you just loved him. He was just a great player. Loved watching him play. Great fielder. Well, we you know what we actually we told them we didn't we didn't pick which game to watch today. We said just give it any game. Because okay. we are real Yankee fans. Like you could, uh, they could have gave us a game where we lost by 18. We still gonna watch <laughs> it. But this yeah. team, and then the Red Sox, and we were even talking about how great the team was when you were on it. And you know, just having you, you know, having you at the at, at bat, you knew there was a chance for a big home run coming or a great play, a great catching play from you. And you know, like we, it reminds us. There, there is the crazy eyes. There oh, the crazy eyes. Oh, oh. Look at that. I love it. Crushing them. Hey, even Bobby was yeah. like, wow. Yeah. How about that fist pump? I was, that I was loving that one, man. This buds for the Blues, the Reds, and the Warriors. This buds for the Giants, the Jazz, and the Magic. This buds for the home team. I mean, oh. that. that was early in the season. I wanted to wanted to get that home run and RBI, uh, you know, numbers up. Got to get that done. <laughs> yeah, and not, and not for nothing. Uh, for me, it was it, like you said. It was the lineup. It was just like, man, it was like you said, like like offense on offense on offense. It was oh my god. Bananas. I mean, mm -hmm. we had we had guys like like Andrew Jones and and Eduardo Nunez, you know, pitching at the end or, or, or hitting at the end of the lineup. Right. right? I mean, and you got Nunez back ninth. Other, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Nudie, one of my one of my favorites, man. He would, he looked like he was like this all the time, right? I mean, flying around <laughs> the bases, you know, always diving. Nudie would dive into the stands when the ball is in the twelfth row. We're like Nudie, <laughs> man. Like we love the right, efforts, but I can't have you get hurt, man. We need we only have twenty five guys on this roster. I can't have you getting hurt. Man. <laughs> You know, before they got to call him Wing Ding McGee, you know, from Scranton or whatever. It's Staten Island. Oh, man. <laughs> and how, Soriano? So, Rafael Soriano, if you guys remember when, when yeah. Mo hurt his knee, um, you know, in, in Kansas City and blew out his knee, yeah. Story stepped up that season. Big time. And, oh, my gosh. He yeah, was I remember. awesome that season. Yeah. Uh, and we needed it, too, because, I mean, listen, when, when Mo got hurt, he was still the best closer in baseball. Easily. Like, it's not like he had lost anything, and so Soria yeah. stepped up. He was he was huge for us. Yeah, it was. Shout to him. Yeah, when Mo got hurt, that was like the first. That was the first moment I was like, "Wow, we're not gonna have Mo forever." That was in like, yeah. Well, it also it also it just proved like I think he had maybe one shoulder surgery his entire career, like just a cleanup. Um, and the, what took him out was doing what he loves, you know, running around in the outfield. Running around center field, yeah. yeah. Had, everyone was so out. It was like, why is he running? It's like he's really good at that. Like that's what he did. He he loved it. it kept him in shape, you know. And yeah. um, listen, man, like it worked. It worked for twenty years. He had one hiccup. It happens. Like yeah. that's life. Yeah. And then people forget Mo when he was on the mound. He had like cat-like reflexes. Like if the ball was coming right at him, going just catch it. Like he was so. Mariano fast. Rivera was the best athlete on the Yankees for twenty. Mm -hmm. He was like, I mean, yeah, it's funny old, because his mold. Until, yeah, yeah, there he is. There he is. I feel like until his last year, he looked like he still looks like he could ball. I, I guarantee you, if you gave Mo a month to get in shape and throw, he can close out games for you. Right? Now. I do not doubt that. I, because, I don't. I do not doubt it at all. Because even if he threw eighty-eight, right? Um, with how much his ball moves, you're not going to square him up. Like, you're right. just not going to square that cutter up. Yeah, man. That's what made him – that, that was like the Thanos pitch, man. Like, nobody could yeah. touch it. It was wild. Dude, it, it, when, especially when he when he threw 96. So, by the end of his career, it's probably 91, 92. It's still dominant. But when he threw 96, 96 you, would look, like, cutter movement? you would look at that ball 
on TV and say there's no way like that must be that must be a uh, like a CGI mirage. or something like, like a mirage <laughs> like there's no way it's actually moving that much and then you get to the plate it's moving more like that that's the thing that was upsetting to me as a hitter I'm like okay I think I got an idea of how to hit him now breaks your bat nope okay you like do some research and I try next at bat breaks your bat nope and he just I'm not sure if he if if I ever as a first baseman got a hard hit ball to me when he was yeah, because he was like a weak tapper. Like, yeah. yeah, everything was a weak tapper. Scoop it up. Exactly. <laughs> like, I, I would like play like infield, like on the infield grass, mm-hmm. because you know it was it was a lot. There was a lot bigger chance of a guy getting an infield hit off Mo than mm-hmm. like Get hitting a hard one. one by. Yeah, I remember because I can actually remember seeing like one Mar- Mariano blew one save or something. I do remember that. <laughs> one and many. it was just like, it wasn't many. And I just remember I was at a one. bar and everybody at the bar was like, what happened? Yeah. And we were just like, he had one day off. Exactly. Yeah, it happens to everybody. Yep. Um, oh, man. Eight to nine in the seventh. Oof. Yeesh. What was well, the longest? Also, you do have to give our bullpen credit for, mm-hmm. for holding those guys down. I mean, yeah. After, yeah, no. the, after the Cody Ross home run, um, that was it. Like, yeah. those guys, those guys did a great job. Yeah. No, we were saying Phelps held it down, man. For a, a, a Phelps. Minute. So David Phelps was one of the best, like pitchers for us because he could do both. Like, if we needed him to start, he could start. If we needed him to come in for three or four innings, like he did, you know, in this game where you know he had we stretched him out a little Long bit. Relief. Yeah. yeah. But also, man, his stuff was good enough that, hey, man, we need you to get a big out in the eighth, like righty on righty matchup. Um, so, like in these games, especially when it ends like 12 9 or whatever, you end up understanding like the little things that made that game, made you win that game. And it wasn't just us hitting the home runs and coming back, it was guys like Phelps stepping up and, and stopping the bleed. Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh, there's a pop oh. up. Just make sure, hey, Russ, get out of my way, man. I got that ball. Mm-hmm. I got that. <laughs> Yo, talk, but let's talk. Let's talk about it, man. Your range at first base was was wild, man. You could, I, I recall vividly a, a bunch of plays, man, where you just like laid out, like Superman, yeah, yeah so, still on the bag, catching so a ball that should have been in the third row. Yeah, I'm six two, but my my wingspan is six six, so I got like longer arms than I should, um, and that allowed me to be a, a great first baseman because. You know, I mean, most of the balls that I'm diving for, I'm barely catching by like that much. And so the longer, the longer arms are helping that. When I'm stretching at first base, longer arms help. When I'm scooping a ball, when I'm going into the stands to catch a ball. So, you know, look at look at all the best first basemen. Most of them are, are kind of like gangly. Like mm-hmm. they're, they're like they're like a little bit longer. And I think yeah. that's what really helped me. Um, that that. I had the flexibility and and the kind of the wingspan to be a good first base. Nice. And then you added, you know, forty something pounds of muscle onto the gangly and started hitting balls <laughs> eight thousand feet out the park. <laughs> so, you know, I and I, I was a shortstop and third baseman when I was young, and oh, wow. and there and people were like, oh, well, yo, like why'd you move? You know, why'd you move to first base? And I'm like, because I wasn't that good at third base. <laughs> I, I wasn't. I I was. I, I was 150 pounds when I started high school and I graduated uh-huh. 210. I just kept getting bigger and growing and lifting weights, kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And now yeah, I play the base at 220, 225. So after high school, I didn't grow that much. But what happened was as a sh- high school shortstop at 150 pounds, you're good, man. You run around, you, you know, by the uh-huh. time you're 210 pounds and like you're a power hitter, like you better be an incredible athlete to be able to play third base or some of those other positions. And I just wasn't. So I got over to first and I kind of settled in. And it was like, all right, mm-hmm. you got the long arms, you got good hands, you got decent footwork, but you just need to stay at first. Like catch everything that comes to you, you know, feel the bunts, scoop the balls out of the, you know, out of the ground. And it took me about a year to kind of get the footwork down. But then man, I loved playing first base. Man. It was so Don't much fun. Races. Oh, so yeah, and we loved having you on first base, man. We used to gobble that. Listen, having you on first base, there were balls that when other other first basemen the Yankees had, we'd have to cross our fingers. But anytime you were there, it was like snatched out the air every <laughs> time, man. Because you, know you, you know those like hard hit balls to third or like in between second and third? And 
it's kind of like an awkward throw and it's, you're just trying to get the guy out. Uh -huh. and you you kind of make an off balance throw and it's just like, ah, but when you were, when you were first, I was like, oh, he got it. He'd always catch those. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I, I would tell my infielders my entire career, like, listen, guys, just get rid of the ball because if it's close to me, I'm going to catch it. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of guys will take too much time to try to make that perfect it throw. And listen, yeah. even if it's a perfect throw, the guy's safe. Mm -hmm. So so what I told all those guys was, listen, don't worry about the perfect throw. Get rid of it, and if it's close, I'm going to scoop it or I'm going to, you know, stretch off the bag, and, and we're going to get this guy out. Smart. Oh, got, 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 what was that, a no-hitter? The uh, uh, Perfect game. Oh, the Philip Humber. Humber. Perfect game. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I didn't remember that was the, the that was a big deal because Philip Humber, I don't know if he really did much the rest of his career, but he, uh, yeah, he threw that perfect Ooh. game for the Mariners. Yeah, there's been a, there's been a couple of people who's had perfect games and then just you never hear about them again. That's like, Alice Braden. a jinxy thing. Yeah. Remember Alice Braden? Mm -hmm. Yep. He threw a perfect game. Um yeah, man, it's just it's one of those like crazy things. Some of the best pitchers of all time have never thrown a no hitter. Yeah, it's a lot of it's luck. I mean, you're gonna have balls hit hard against you. Yeah, you know that's why that's why. Listen, we play 162 games for a reason. There's a yeah. lot of luck that happens in baseball, and through one for one week or for or for even one month, you, the breaks can go either your way or against you. But over mm -hmm. six months, the, the breaks it are balances gonna, out exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's why you play some of the games. Is that my man, Nick Swisher? Whoa! Oh! Nick! Swisher! Oh, look at the house! We got the Swisher Let's house! Go! Whoa! Nick, come on, Swisher! Come on, come on, we got Peter. the Boogie <laughs> Down Brooks hat on! <laughs> the next Dude. Monday! Man, I am so happy so to see you, Swisher. I'm so happy to see you, I'm great, buddy. Oh, Where are man. you? You out in LA? No, we're still not here in Florida, bro. You know, oh, like you all this stuff hit and, you know, we were lucky to be here during spring training and we just kind of stayed here. All the girls came out. We got all the animals here, bro. We practically have a zoo here nowadays. Oh, wow. Oh, Nick Exotic out here. <laughs> wow. How you guys doing, man? You guys doing all right? We're doing great, we're doing man. Great. We're just here watch, sitting here watching classic Yankee footage. All right. Watching Your home boy, man. Oppo Grand Slam. Yeah, my Whoa. boy Tex popped three of them that day, bro. Three, my two. man. <laughs> two, two, two and a nice two, double. Right? Two and a nice oh, double. Oh, yeah. Should have been three. Hey, hey, swish, Swish, you were looking pretty sexy out there, man. Like, oh. hey, that was that was a long time ago, buddy. That was eight years ago. No, man. Can you believe how fast it's going by? I'm so watching the replays. I'm like, bro, I don't feel that old, man. I still feel pretty good, you know? Yeah, we were just talking, before you guys got on, we were just talking to CC Sabathia about uh, this game and some of the other games. And it's just like our point of reference is we're talking about 09, like that was last year. And everyone else watching this is like, no, my friend, that was quite <laughs> no. some time ago. <laughs> it was like a decade ago, ago man, for real. Man, it's oh, crazy, man. man. It's like, you know, for guys like Tex and I, we were so lucky to be part of the New York Yankees when we were, I mean, bro, we were kicking ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like going to the playoffs every year. And you know, yeah. even when I left, I mean, they continue to keep up all the stuff they were doing. So, yeah. I mean, just it the times that we were there, it was such a good time to be a Yankee, man. And, and we were so blessed to be there. Yeah. And then guys, because we're diehard Yankee tone, fans, man. like every time we talk to, you know, like you got the new generation coming up, but we're the guys like, yeah, you, you remember Mark Teixeira? You remember Nick <laughs> yeah. Fisher? Remember. Yeah. Or, or the worst, you're having a conversation. Someone's like, yeah, my father was a big fan of that person. I'm like, you're right. Exactly, dude. <laughs> uh, I, I knew it was getting old, man. In Texas, I'm sure you were doing the same thing. I was trying to make my comeback there in 2016. I was in AAA, right? And I remember these young kids coming over there to first base, like, man, Swish, I remember when I used to have pictures of you back when I was in junior high. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> shut your mouth, bro. Oh, <laughs> my God. I had your poster on my wall when I was 10, bro. Yeah, yeah you're making oh. it feel good and bad all the same At the time. same time. <laughs> Oof. But we were talking about that, the younger guys, uh, you know the, the that like kind of second generation of, of players like you know you got Tatis Jr. Vlad Jr. and all these guys are coming up and I played like with the, all we, and Swish and I played with all their dads yeah. <laughs> that's, that's crazy thing. I mean yeah. the, the amount the amount of so so I got Swish what you were drafted 02 02 yeah yeah so I was drafted 01 so Swish and I were you know around the same age and come up together and guys that were veterans when we were rookies 
their kids were rookies when we were veterans. That's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was weird to see. Well, I tell you what's even cooler, and, and Texas, I mean, you're, you're killing it over there at ESPN doing the same thing, even mm -hmm. being able to still be part of the game and still oh, yeah. watching how the game is evolving and watching the new studs coming up, right? Like you're saying, the Tatis Juniors, the Vlad Juniors, the next wave of guys that, that we're going to be commentating on for the next yeah. 10 years. Mm -hmm. And Switch, t tell me what you think about this. I, I think that the young players are more prepared for the major leagues today than when we when we first came up yeah. because yeah. – the advanced scouting, all of like they're playing so many more games when they're younger, and I felt like I was still learning the game when I got into the big leagues. These guys have figured yeah. it out. Oh, bro, they are yeah, studs are at nineteen. Yeah, well, text also too, man. Just the media is so much more now. I mean, obviously being part of the media. I mean, I mean, you guys as well. Like, you guys know what's going on, and so yeah. it's funny because like I, I don't remember doing an interview for the first time in my life until I was like a junior in college. Well, yeah, these right. cats are getting interviewed at like 10, 11, 12 years old now. Yeah. yeah. So now, like you're saying, man, these guys are ready for Jump Street now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, my, my like my first year, like in the big leagues, my eyes were just like this the entire year. Like, yes. I couldn't believe it. Now these guys, I mean, whether it's you know whether it's you know doing social media stuff, you know they're they're studs at 16 on on MLB Network getting interviewed, like you said, and so yes. by the time they get to the by the time they get to the big leagues, it's not a big deal. To yeah, it's no big deal. They're ready. Right. And also, yeah, too, you know, I think yeah. – oh, not to interrupt, but just the last thing. It just, I mm -hmm. also think, too, just the overall community of baseball is so much bigger because these guys have been going to showcases together ever since they were, like, 11 years old, right? Like, yeah, the, Texas, the first time we stuff, ever saw yeah. each other might have been on the college field. We were going yeah. to showcases and stuff back then. But nowadays, it's almost like – if you're not going to perfect game, or if you're not going to all those things, then it's hard for people to get a hold of you. Yeah, it's it, it, you got to be the right place at the right time. Yeah, it's it's kind of like basketball and the AAU stuff. Like, where yep. guys will go straight from high school to an AAU team instead of going to college, and it's like you you, you know oh oh this guy oh this time they got a mixtape <laughs> yeah. they got a mixtape of you dunking on everybody and it's like who is this guy? I mean, dude, seven he's sixteen years old. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, baseball, I feel like it was it's more like a life, like a lifetime thing. Like you go in little, you mm -hmm. stun in little league, and yeah, then you I just keep climbing up, keep climbing the ladder. Yeah, yeah. totally. I mean, e even in the high school ranks, I mean, even down here in Florida, I mean, the high school baseball down here is out of control. I mean, you know, I mean, one of the most notable names is I'm thinking of the polar bear, Pete Alonso, coming out of playing high school over here in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And it's like nowadays, if you don't play as part of their organizations coming up the ladder, then you're not really going to even get a shot to play in high school either. And I think yeah. that's a shame. Because for guys like Tex and I, and, and y'all too, we played everything, man. We didn't just mm -hmm. play one sport back in the day. We wanted to be well-rounded athletes. And now yeah. I feel like sometimes they're, they're, they're pigeonholing guys to play one Early. sport all year long. And I think we're losing out on a lot of athletes. Yeah. yeah. CC mentioned that about pitchers, man. He was, because, you know, I was, I was asked, like, when a pitcher gets drafted, does the guy come in, is it like, are you, we're drafting you because we need a starter. We're drafting you because we need a long relief guy. We're drafting you because we need a closer. And Cecil was just like, no, that, that if you got drafted, you got drafted to be a starter. And then if you failed as a starter or you found, you know, your niche, whatever, if you were a yep. long relief guy, a closer, I mean, they put you in that role. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That, no, D -Mac, hey, D -Mac, them shoes looking money back there, kid. Dang, I like that. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. I'm jealous, bro. I'm jealous. That's high, that's high praise right there, Nick. Oh, man. Uh, it was eight, nine. Nick, every time you, we saw you as a Yankee, you always had, you looked like you were having the time of your life. Like, oh, man. Wow. oh the infectious I, smile. And then actually, I remember running into you in the London game last yeah, in year. In London, right? And yeah. I was like, yo, this guy is a ball of energy. Like, <laughs> how were you able to, like, come to the game every day and just that same energy level? Come on, man. Oh. I mean, it takes to answer the same question, man. It's, we were the, one of the lucky ones, right? Like, we were one of the lucky guys that got to climb to the top of the mountain. And there's oh, not yeah. a whole lot of people out there that can say they did something like that. And so mm -hmm. I think for Tex and I, when we came up, it wasn't necessarily a job. It wasn't a business. It was more of just a, a passion and a love for something. Now that's I think the business side of things really taken over. And I think that's a shame because now it's like everyone's worrying about their contracts and things like that. Rather than just going out and just playing the game, man, and just yeah. showing the love and just letting that just 
overall passion and excitement for the game just ooze out of your body. But I feel like right now, now it's more business related. No, well, you know? going back to oh, who's up to? All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet right now because Swish, Wait, yeah. you need to talk <laughs> about. Talk us through this. Talk us through this, Swish. <laughs> You walk to the plate with a tremendous swag energy. So, like, I know something's about, about to happen. Oh, man, I'm telling you, man. You, you know what? When Anytime you get the chance to play a Fenway, bro, against the Red Sox, you, you know you want to bring your best. You know you know you want to be at your best. And the yeah, bullpen right. was weak, I heard, well, at that time. Yeah, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Top of the eighth. Eight, nine, got runners on first and second. Mm -hmm. oh, that was crazy, man, because it, it just goes to show you what type of squad that team was that year, man. It was a no-quit yeah. team. I mean, no we quit. had 17 walk-off. Or, or, I mean, oh, nine, we had 17 walk-off wins, and I think it just kept going, right? Like, yeah. there's a there's a never-quit attitude within the New York pinstripes. And, hey, when you put those stripes on, baby, you know you know what's expected of so Swish, yeah. I, I want everyone I want everyone to uh, to realize like you have this great personality and, it, and you light up a room. But when you're in that box, like when you got into the box, it was all business. And oh, yeah, the look face at changed. your face. Look at your yep, face yeah. in the box here. Yeah, you're right, man. Hey, you know how it goes, Tex. It's like you know, we get to do it three or four times a game, you know. So you, you better make the most of it. Yeah. Yep. Have have fun. Have fun outside the box. But when you're inside the box, it's all business. That's yeah, funny, man, because was, that was like the only place I was ever calm in my life was in the battle box, bro. That's it. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What, what are you, so what are you thinking right now? You got Numi on second? Yeah, you know what's funny, man? So, so uh, uh, Aseba has actually played with us, you know? So, so we knew him pretty well. And obviously, big-time fastball guy. But for myself, I was always the guy that kind of struggled with off-speed pitches, curveballs, change-ups. So in that particular position right there, I mean, you're just trying to put the ball in play. You want to try and just pass the torch on to the next guy. That that was probably a ball right there, Swish, by the way. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. You can tell the way Swish shakes his head right there. What do you say to the umpire? <laughs> what do you say to the umpire when it's clearly a ball? All right, man, come on, it's a big game right now. Come on now, <laughs> stay on the plate, it's a big game. You know? <laughs> oh, look at that young man. Look at Tex. Tex got that stare. He wants oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, bro, come on. Hey, he, this guy stole it, bro. For real, Let's bro. Go. He got that look about him, you know? I'm, I'm pulling oh. for the thing switch here. Yeah, baby. Oh, let's go. 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 Oh, 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 man. Right oh. there, Nick. Wow. You know what? As a, as a Red Sox fan, that has to hurt even more because it wasn't a straight home run. It was off the monster. Oh. Was, I know, <laughs> man. Oh, <laughs> man. What, what, what was crazy about that play is, like, what I like the most about that is our first base, Derek Jeter, man. He was moving the whole he way. Moving. He didn't stop. He, I mean, I mean, what, what didn't that guy do well at the end of the day? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was almost like he knew exactly what he had to do, when man. crank it, yeah? Yep. And then he's like, I'm tagging. I'm out of here. No, I'm out of here. I'm out of there, bro. He, he played enough games in that in that stadium that he knew when a ball came off the bat, he knew it was going to happen. I mean, scoring from scoring from hey, you first knew. Was huge. You knew. That's big, you, you, you know what? that he knew because he came yeah. in right before, right right after Nooney. He slid yeah, right, right on it. Right on it. I tell you who right. else that reminds me of. I don't know if you remember this game. Remember text me playing the Mets? Remember Rod Luis popped that ball up Castillo Luis and Castillo in second base? <laughs> Mark the show was running the whole time. Right? You know what I mean? Hey, Swish, I, I talk to people more about that play than any other play in my Yankee tent. By the way, at the end of the day, that play, uh, along that with the home wild. runs, the all-star games, the championship, the whole nine, that right there, that play, epitomized exactly who you were as a player. Because most exactly. people, two outs, a runner on first base, would have jogged, bro. Would have been like, that's yep. an automatic out, and they would jog it out. So kudos to you, bro. And that's always the type of player you did, man. You should be proud of yourself. Going, because you, you hey, be man, watching. young kids, you don't, young kids pay attention to that. Because they, they don't play like that no more. You know what I'm saying? Yep. If you Absolutely. if you rewatch it, so Sherry was running hard the whole the whole, the whole play. Way. If so he, he looked like up. that dude in Happy Gilmore, you know what I'm saying? Running out the fairway. <laughs> I wasn't fast. Was bro. I wasn't fast. Like Terminator, like Terminator running after the car, bro. <laughs> 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 he was moving, bro. He was moving. But 
that was, that awesome, was one of them. That was, was such like, a heads up play, man. Oh yeah. man. I I think one one thing that our team always did well was we had good fundamentals. Like yeah, we 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 may not have always been the best team on the field, but because we had the best fundamentals. We won more games. Like I remember the 09 run swish. Remember yeah. the mistakes the other teams made that we yes. didn't make. Yes. Yep. I mean, and, and that's how you. Have, that's what it takes to win a World Series. There's 30 teams out there that want to win it, and like you've got to do all the little things well to win a championship. Yes. Yeah. Right. There's no doubt about it, man. I also think in general, man, like. Just the veterans and, and the leaders we had in that locker room, bro. I mean, like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, the yeah. list can go on and on and on of all these ballers yeah. we had on there, man. Well, look at our yeah, vets. Te Tex, Tex mentioned that earlier. He's like, man, we had we had a team of vets that knew how to play the game. Yep. Well, know? that team right there had had Raul Ibanez and Eric Chavez on the bench this game. Yeah. Right. 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 players. They're on the bench. Yeah, right. yeah. Like players that could be like stars on other teams. They're, yeah, they are starting in Pittsburgh. Yeah, <laughs> they, were, well, they, were, they were and they were stars most of their career. But yeah, at the end of their career when they're still good, they're mm -hmm. like, I want to go play for the Yankees because I want to be a part of that culture. Yep. Well, and, 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 and for them it. to take that step back in a sense to say like, hey, I might not be the superstar that I once was, but yeah, I still yeah. got game. I still got, I still got something game. inside of me. Yep. And for them to come over as veteran guys and to be unbelievable. And you know how amazing those guys were in the locker room. I mean, mm -hmm. Eric Chavez, I had him in Oakland and in New York. Love and by it. the way, man, he was a baller in Oakland, man. I mean, six gold gloves in a row. Yeah. And then he came yeah. over for us and had two great seasons, which I was so proud of him for. Yeah. Battled through injuries. Tex, he was our locker man. He was. He was. I, lo I love Shavi. What a great yeah, man. Oh, I mean, both those guys. Both those guys are awesome. You, you can't say enough nice things about Rowling Banyas, bro. I mean, come on, bro. He's just like, I just want to hug you. Up. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Hey, he hit a couple big home runs in the 2012 postseason, did he? Oh, bro! Hey, hey! You remember when he pinch hit for a Rod, bro? And the place was going crazy, bro. Going crazy. <laughs> bro. Going crazy. Oh, no. That's he clipped him, bro, in the ninth, and then blocked him off in the tenth, bro. Oh, wow! Oh, couldn't believe that, man. That was amazing. Man, How many games have you guys been watching? How long have you guys been doing this? No, this is the this first, is the, first uh, the first one that we've oh, done. I'll do this every day if they, if they ask me. Listen, <laughs> wait, listen, if you guys are free back, you guys roll back. Roll back, bro. Hey, roll, roll back. the highlight tape, baby. We ready. Listen, we ready. If, we, <laughs> listen if, it, if baseball was on right now, we'd be watching it regardless. So this, yeah, And we've that's watched, true, you know, we're real, we are diehard Yankee fans. So every, we've watched almost every game. Like Ooh. games that you're just like, forget it. The season's over. Then I go, no, I'm there, baby. And like now, because I like right now, I'm literally maybe 20 blocks away from Yankee Stadium. Yeah, I'm always at Yankee Stadium, always going to the games. Like that's a for me and Miro, I know that like Yankee Stadium is like our mecca, and just oh, watching yeah. the Yankees is just basically it's such a it's such a source of pride for us. And it's one of those things where people ask, they're like, what you know, like what team would you? Stop being Yankee fans to root for, and it's just such a weird question because it's like not even possible. Oh, no, what? Like, is there like, a what are you talking about? Are yeah. there any no. It's wild, and be you know what it is too. Being two kids, two kids from the Bronx, you know what I mean. Just growing up, we're you know, that's our team. That was like the crown jewel of the Bronx is Yankee Stadium and the Yankees. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, well, I think there's something there's something special about that Yankee culture. It's such a generational thing. It really it's passed is. down from the grandparents to the parents down to the kids and then to the mm -hmm. grandkids and then we're just hey we're grooming them next yeah you come right hey we put you in that crib we're gonna put them stripes on you you know it's like you. we were filming <laughs> something is, um yeah we were filming something last season like, how many organizations have you been a part of but they don't have the passion that the yankee fans have no no Yan yankees are, are something special i mean it's a totally different animal yeah definitely i took my i took my 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 Firstborn son, five months old, to Derek Jeter's. He was at Derek Jeter's 3,000th hit game. You when he went deep. And when he went deep. Yep. Yep. When he went deep, and I said, and I stood up, and I, I'm holding him. I'm hold, <laughs> I got, I got him in one arm, and I got a beer in the other, in the other hand. <laughs> and I'm like, he's gonna go deep. He's gonna go deep. He's gonna go deep. He went deep. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm losing my mind. My wife is like, you're holding. Give me the baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. We got Mark Teixeira. He's at bat. Let's Base is loaded. I think oh, Sonny. Let's go. 
Something good is about to happen here, fellas. Something good. Something good. Uh, I see after, it. Something good. This bad, after this at bat, I'm going to sign off and let you guys talk to Swish the rest of the way because, you know, Swish has got enough personality for the entire internet. <laughs> oh, no, man. I'm going to move it along. <laughs> oh. Okay, here we go. But the laser eyes. Yeah, man. Love it. It's locked in. I'm not sure what kind of what what kind of uh, pitch I hit here. I do remember I do remember the outcome, but I don't remember the pitch. So that'll oh, be wow. that'll be a surprise to me. What was your favorite pitch to hit back then? Hang and change up. Hang and change like like the bit like what Swish was talking about, man. You hang and change up, you might as well just underhand the ball to me. Put it on like, a team. Oh, wow. <laughs> because because even like even like a like a fastball. I mean, obviously a fastball down the middle, but like no one's trying to do that. That was huge. Yeah. Oh, that was so much fun. Let's yeah. Go. Look at the pitcher. Pitcher is sick. Ah. Swiss, you know Bobby. this. Baseball so Bobby's hard. like, yeah, I'll be, I, I won't be here next year. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you can you can drive in six runs in a game with two home runs, three hits, man. It just makes you like it just gives you a good week. Like I got a good yeah. week now. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Bro. Oh, yeah. How good does it feel, man? Hey, by the way, you get six going? stakes. Six stakes in one game? Oh bro, I'm looking for player of the week, baby. Look at Tony, Tony, Tony. Tony's I'm like, Bobby, go down. You did go down, Bobby. Bueno, bueno, trabajo, bueno, bueno. I'm gonna start off and let Swish take it from here. Swiss, cool. great seeing you, man. Good to see Mark, you. Thank you for talking to us, family, bro. Y'all stay Thanks. safe, okay? Hey, guys, let's do this again. Definitely, yes, sir, Mark. Sure. Thank you for talking to us. We're huge hey, man, fans. Mark, Thank you for making time for us. Thanks Mark, for having me. Right. God. See everybody. Hey, All right, Jeez. guys. Hey, man, how you not love that guy right there, bro? You for real, Mark Teixeira, bro? Bro, he's hey, man, he went through, Hey, he went through some stuff there in the end in New York, man. And I'm telling you, bro, he didn't deserve none of that. He was just one of those guys showed up every day. And yeah. did his thing, bro. One of the greatest switch hitters ever. 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 Oh, yeah. That's but, you know, real Yankee fans appreciated Mark Teixeira. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. Well, it's funny, you man. Always... I, I, I even remember back in, like, 09, I brought over to be the first baseman for, like, two minutes. And then they're like, uh -huh. no, we're going to sign Mark Teixeira to, like, a $181 million contract. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, no. I'm going to be the first baseman. No. No. <laughs> but we need to play we something else, man, for real. Oh man! Me, but but that but like you said, it was back in the day when you were growing up. You were just trying to be an all-around athlete, so that helps, yeah. you know, in that yeah. situation. Because it's like, okay, I gotta I gotta switch positions yeah. or whatever. Yeah, you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, Nick. I see you. That's why I see you, baby. I see you. Over there. You know what, Nick? Before you, it was funny. We were talking about you before you even came on this. We were talking about uh, when there's like a blowout and a position player starts pitching. Oh, that yeah. time when you, oh, oh bro, hey, right. Not only that, dude. You got to remember, man. Like. Oh, nine. We started off on the road that year, right? You know, uh -huh. we started off in Baltimore, and then we went to Tampa. And bro, we were getting blasted on something like yes. 15 five. And I just remember standing. I was on. I was in the hole, right? I was getting ready to go on the all deck circle. And Joe Girardi's like looking around, bro. He's. I mean, he's pacing, bro. We're getting whacked. We haven't even played a, a home game yet in New York. We got this brand new team. They spent all this money, and we're just getting pummeled, bro. So he's looking around, man. And all of a sudden, he turns. He locks eyes with me. And he's like, have you ever pitched? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> hell yeah, Skip. Oh, hell yeah, man. I got this, baby. He's like, good. You're going to have to take off all that flair. <laughs> I had all my wristbands and stuff uh -huh. on, you know? Trying to peel all my wristbands on, bro. And it's funny, man, because I've, I've had the chance to work with Gabe Kapler a little bit, man. And he's mm -hmm. such an amazing guy, an intense, smart man, especially baseball-wise. But I'm telling you, man, I bring it up to him once a month. I'm like, hey, man. You remember when I pushed you out back in the day, bro? That was so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> what was the pitch? What was your pitch, though? Oh, bro, it's funny, man, because I, you know, shoot, last time I pitched, like, freshman year in high school, bro. Like, it was in a minute, just, you know what I'm saying? Just, but I was just, so like, just hey, to throw pumping 82, bro. Me and my little pea shooter arm right here, 82, <laughs> bro. It's funny, because after the game, they asked, they were asking uh, Gabe about that. They were like, hey, what about that, you know, what about that strikeout? He was like, well... Now, when someone asks me what my most embarrassing moment is, I now have an answer. <laughs> what a great I quote, that. man. What a great quote. I remember that because the <laughs> next day on uh, the Mike Francis show, people were calling in. They were like, does this guy Swisher, could he go in the bullpen? 
Like they really. <laughs> <laughs> He's, got He's got good really stuff. Like, He's got, got good stuff. Yeah, because we opened up. Remember, we opened up with Cleveland, right? And we mm -hmm. got we were, we were getting waxed like ten nothing in that game too, right? Yep. And I, I'll never forget, man. The place they started chanting, "We want Swisher" about in the seventh or eighth inning because we didn't, <laughs> we could, nobody could get anybody out. And right. I'm like, oh no, man, I was zero point zero zero ERA, bro. ERA. <laughs> right there, bro. <laughs> oh, so yeah, man. man. That was awesome, man. Hey, just talking to y'all, man, it's like, number one, y'all are cool as hell, man, but it's like bringing back such good memories, man. Really bro, cool. ima you, man. imagine our position. We're talking to Nick Swisher, bro. Oh, like, yeah, right. Oh, hey, man, hey, we had a blast in London, man. We had so, so much fun, kids, man. You know, a hot minute, you know? We had so much bro. fun, bro. We got to do it again, bro. I agree, this man. Is, Absolutely. And anytime nuts, you guys bro. need me, man, I'm all there for y'all, man. Anything Definitely. When this, <laughs> when this is all over, you got to come on the show, man. I love yeah, you. You're killing it, man. I'm so proud of y'all, man. Rep from New York, baby. 212, let's go. Let's Thank go. You, bro. I love that, man. You guys keep doing what you're doing, man. It's a lot of fun, man. You guys bring joy to the world, and we need a lot of that right now. You know? For Thank real. you, Swish. That Appreciate is high you, praise, man. That is high praise. Every time, truth, you, hey, you every time we saw you, you put a smile on our faces. So, you know, we're right, just really that's good. Fact, we helping each other, baby. That's how it should yeah. be. Yeah. Wow. That's what's up. 14. How do you blow yeah. a nine-run lead? Wow. They Dang. flew this dude straight in from Japan to pitch right now. They were like, yo, we, we're in <laughs> trouble. Like, hey, man, we ain't got nobody right now. <laughs> who's who's so available, man? Fly him in. Oh. And I remember That's this back when they had, they had that blog. It was uh, Boston Dirt Dogs. It was uh, the big, the number one baseball huh? blog. And they would go, they'd go hard on those Red Sox players. Like, yo, the New hey, York man. media was one thing. But the Boston. Mm. Hey man, hey, I, I got nothing respect for the city of Boston. The way the way they live their lives, blue collar like we do in New York, you know. Uh huh. So at the end of the day, man, like they 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 want a winner, just like they we want do, a man. They want a yeah. winner, just like uh -huh. we do. And there's a reason uh -huh. why they got some championships here in the last couple of years, man. Because they definitely been, they've been putting together some squads over there, you know. Now it's about yeah. time we get ours again, man. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been yeah, a minute yeah. years, man. So yeah. It's been a, been a minute. We need to get one. We need to get yeah, another one, you know? We're gonna, we're gonna get some more, but Boston got a little catching up to do though, so. They do, just, just right. a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> oh man, 14 and nine. Oof. Yeah man, it's amazing. Isn't that crazy, man? It's almost like, uh, I even kind of watch, yep. I mean, just talking about all sorts of sports now because we ain't got nothing on we're watching these days. I've been watching yep. that last dance, man. I don't know about y'all. Yes, like, definitely. Come on, man. Just the, the overall chase for greatness that yeah. Michael and that entire team had. And I just finished episode five, episode four or five, when he won his first championship. Yep. And the mm -hmm. reason why he won that championship, because he started trusting his teammates. Teammates. And you can't win a game on your own, man. Baseball yep. is a team game, played of uh -huh. individuals, man. You got to do your part, just like everybody else does. But that's the thing, man. When you're in New York, you put that uniform on, you put that NY right here, right here on your chest, you know what's expected of you, man. Exactly. And for somebody like me, that was blessed to have that opportunity, man. I wanted to jump on that, bro, and I wanted to ride it for the rest of my life, bro. I mean, hey, I mean, I'm technically still working for the Yankees, bro. I can't get away from this spot. That's man. right. <laughs> they don't, no complaints over here, bro. Oh, wow. I love it, man. It's, it's good been so much be. fun, man. Just, just being able to be part of the organization and just, I don't know, I guess at the end of the day, man, just being one of those guys that people want to have around, you know, yeah. for myself, just like, be welcome back, being asked to come back. I mean, come mm -hmm. on, bro. That's like the greatest honor that you could have as an athlete is being brought back by an yeah. organization that you once played with. So for myself, man, I don't take none of this for granted, man. I know exactly how blessed I was. So that's why it's so easy to talk about these great memories, man, with a big smile and a lot of uh -huh. energy and passion, because it does, man. It literally takes you back to that good spot. Because yeah. nowadays, bro, come on, bro. I'm not competing against anybody anymore. I'm like, man, right. I, miss that. I miss all that. Oh, ah. oh got him. Oh, oh, error. That error. Oh, you oh, know what? This man. is a fun game to watch as a Yankee fan. This hurts if you're a Red Sox fan. And like a <laughs> slow burn, bro. A like slow burn. Yeah. Oh. Because like, it was nine one for like real real four innings, and five innings. Real bad, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it went from a Red Sox classic game to a game we do not talk about. You know, like. <laughs> hey. Yeah, they're like, dude, we don't remember that game. Did that happen? Yeah. That We're not bringing this up. <laughs> it went from a game that they show on a rainy day in uh, in Boston to a game they'll show on a rainy day exactly, in New York. Totally right. You know, when they have a rainy land, they always have a game on the, the scoreboard uh -huh. or something. Yep. That this one ain't on there, bro. That's bad. Oh. <laughs> 
Wow. Oh, and man. you can tell it's, it's a classic Red Sox Yankee game because this is what, like your fifth at bat or maybe like yep. that. Yeah, I tell you what, bro, you, you throw that many runs on the board, bro. I mean, you are just running around. I mean, it's, too, just like, yeah. it's just rotating around. And I think that was kind of just, you know, one of the things that we all did a good job of just passing the torch. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes now in today's games, everybody tries to be the man. You yes. can't always be the man. You, you got to rely on other people. You got to rely on that man behind you. And I think mm -hmm. we did a pretty good job of that, man. So, you know, for us, man, just to be able to be part of all that, to enjoy all that, now watch, watch the young studs in today's game doing it. You want them to be able to achieve the same thing you achieved, you know? Yeah. yeah so for myself, being able to be a, a, a special advisor to a general manager, bro, like, that's all I want. I want another that's ring, it. bro. I want one more, man. Give me yes. One more. <laughs> I can roll up on out of there with two of these things. There you go. <laughs> that's what I want to hear. That's you know the voice I want in the ring, bro. I'm going to put it on my thumb, bro. I'm going to have this monster <laughs> thumb ring, bro, you know? Oh. <laughs> Swag! Oh, man. Yeah, man. 15 9. Uh, 15 man. 9. Ooh. Wow. Hung, I think turn 9 quick. to 1. You hung 14 on him real quick. That's wild. <laughs> that is. Oh, Giants singing. take the lead on the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a first quarter of a basketball game right now. Yeah, no doubt, right? Jeez, <laughs> I mean, we, we played 10 minutes yet? We played 10 minutes yet? Oh, they're singing Sweet Caroline. Yeah, they're getting ready to go home. Yeah. It's tough tough to sing that jam during that game right there, bro. Yeah, it's like... It's tough on that one. I've heard it a lot louder, I can tell you that. I've heard it a lot louder. They're pumping it through the speakers. Yeah, look at this. That's everybody in the stadium right now. Yeah, they're like this. Yeah, everyone's just like, ah, oh, I gotta get out of here. Ah, David Ortiz. Puppy's like, Poppy, I wanna get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Can we play? So, just call, call the game right now. I want to go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's get out of here, bro. Busting 10. Busting 15, bro. Let's get out of here. Boom, Logan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's the oh, game plan man. with you guys moving forward? You guys going to be doing some more games and stuff, too? You know oh, what? Man, this was this was it. the test. This was the test run, and it it might be one of the most amazing things we've ever put out. So we'll, Oh, bro, it. for real, man. And you get go. some good stuff, man. Not like and that. Also, we're such big Yankee fans. You can literally put any Yankee in here, and we would talk to them, and like Bro, we'll be for, super excited. Yes, exactly, right? You know what I'm saying? Like getting all those games because at the end of the day, man, there were so many money games, and at the end of the day, bro, like ain't nobody got nothing to watch right now. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what are you watching, bro? I watched Cornhole the other day for a hot minute, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, did, like, oh. I did the same thing. You did the same thing. Yeah. And I, I was like, I was like, come on, bro. This is the best they could do. Like two, <laughs> like two throws later, I'm like, come on. You know, like, you're, like, you're, you're rooting for it, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's in the wrist. It's in the wrist. With no alcohol in it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's on, you know, it's on ESPN. You got like fruit punch in there or something. You know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> it was women's cornhole. And it's, I was like, how good could this be? And it was just one lady. And she was just like, hole, hole, hole. I was like, oh. It's out, it's out of control. It's out of control. But they, they're like side flipping. And then they get uh -huh. like curved. They throw curveballs and stuff. Yeah, wild, bro. they could knock. They could knock other people's stuff out the off the book. <laughs> yes, I'm like, yes. what? I'm like, I'm like bro, he, he put the whooper duper on him, bro. He put the uh -huh. on him, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally standing in the middle of my living room, like, yeah, cornhole, baby, yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> yo, you're releasing too early, Karen. That's it, man. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Some <laughs> analytics on that before you know it, bro. Perfect oh. trajectory, speed. No, no. Uh oh, here we go. You got it. You got it. Ooh, oh, all yeah. right. Went away. Went away. Woo. So, how you guys been so far, man? You guys been okay through all this stuff, man? You know? Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, just, just staying at home with the kids and the wife, you know, just oh, hanging out. Yeah. Just trying, trying to survive, to still doing the TV show, just watching yeah. a lot of TV, getting a yeah. lot of packages, you know, just life on pause for two months. So, how you holding up? Good, you man. You know, I'm a stuff. silver linings guy, man. I'm a silver linings guy, and I always try to look at things from the other side. And I know this has affected a lot of people in the worst mm -hmm. of ways, and people have lost family members and the whole nine, and I'm so sorry for that. But for myself, man, it's the first time in my life I've been in the same place for four weeks. It's oh, the wow. first time in my life I've been able to spend every dinner with my kids. It's like I taught my oldest daughter how to ride her bike. You know, it's like there are That's so dope. many family things that have happened for us during this mm -hmm. quarantine. And, and and like I said, man, I, I know that, that ours has been good. I know people have had a negative outlook on this, but for myself, man, I look at it like this. There's never going to be another time in my entire life that I'm going to be able to take a break like I am now. That's true. 
Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like you know, cool. try and find a little silver lining in it. Because at the yeah. end of the day, once this thing gets over and it's back on the ground, then I'm rolling again, baby. Yeah, back, on, back, yeah. Yeah, back on the ground. Yep. Yep. That's yep. a good way that's to look at things, That's man. a fact. You know that's what I'm saying? Fact, Just man. even trying to tell like these young kids that I'm doing a little mentoring with. It's like, bro, sports are going to come back. And mm -hmm. sometime they'll be back. And when that bell rings, homie, you better be ready. Ready, you yeah. You better be ready. You know what I'm saying? So I think just in general, man, we need to get things kind of moving again. I, I don't know anything about coronavirus, the whole nine. Right. I do know, man, like eventually things are going to come back. Oh, and yeah. well, anytime something bad happens, man, it almost seems like we come, we come back stronger anyways. Mm -hmm. We always come together. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. I know there's a lot of bad things happening in the world right yeah. now. I just wish there was just a little more love out there. Yeah, yeah man. Well, hopefully, I, mean, honestly, message, I feel like hopefully you saying that you know will resonate with people. Give them a give them a chance because there's so much negativity right now, and it's just like yeah. it's a constant it's the constant toll of the news. It's bad news, bad vibes, bad this. It's even the visuals yeah. of when you go outside, you have to cover your face. Like even that visually is draining yeah. to you. So just you know, shout out to you for those positive words. Maybe yeah, man. And, and nowadays, just a little bit of positivity can go so far. Bro, and just, yeah, like, you, know, you ain't lying, man. For real, hey. We need it now. There's no yeah, doubt, man. man. We need rays of sunshine out there, man, because Definitely. it's a dark world, man. And we got to find our way out of this. Definitely, yep. bro. That's a fact, uh, man. That's why we're I, doing this, you know? Like, old Yankee games, saying. bro. I love this, man. You guys are going to put a smile on people's faces, man, just from doing yeah. this. Just from taking somebody back to another time and yeah. getting them out of 2020, taking them back to 2012 or 11 or 10 or not or whatever mm -hmm. you want to do. Because you know at the gonna, end of the day, man, we gotta kind of we gotta know that this is you know it's crazy now, but it's gonna get better. Yeah, we're gonna in yeah. fact we're gonna we're gonna start rewatching old black and white Yankee games. We watch old oh, Babe Ruth. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get super confused. <laughs> <laughs> like it's Babe Ruth and the Yankees versus the Syracuse Senators. I'm like, why are they? How are they? I'm like, how are they running so fast? What's going on? What's, what's <laughs> the film flickering? <laughs> No doubt. Is that, that, guy's throw, that, that guy's gotta be throwing 84 miles an hour, bro. <laughs> the other guy throws like a 68. He, he, he throws he a 68 mile power chain. Down. Yeah, totally. Bro. <laughs> to me. No wonder nobody struck out back there, bro. This is a person on third eating a T-bone steak. You're like, what the <laughs> He run down the dugout, bro. He's pouting. He got a brew, bro. He's just throwing it down, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Instead of the grounds crew, it's like the first baseman is actually fixing the mound. Like, <laughs> yeah, but like you said, man, everybody leaves their glove at, at their position. The other person yes. comes out and uses the same glove. You say glove. Oh, my God. We used to do that in high school. So just, yeah, right. oh, wow. You me, man, for real. Yeah, we used to like, like, you know, shoot. Anybody, oh. man. I always had to take that because I was left-handed. Ain't no left-handed kids in the neighborhood, bro. So I always had to take a right-handed glove and put it on the hand, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep. They had an opposite glove. They're like, yeah, Swish, that's not how you wear the glove. And I'm like, bro, I don't have a glove. I don't know what to do. Right. I don't know what to tell you, pal. You know what I mean? This is what I got. <laughs> yeah, that's the most happy like, here. Like, what more I need? I see Mariano Rivera teaching us how to make that glove. He was making, remember with like that uh, that cardboard box he was doing? The yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So like, make do, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. listen, so, man. And wait as, as, as a Dominican kid, man, like going back to the DR, you see you see him playing with bottle caps, broomsticks, oh, yeah. whatever they can find. Yeah, yeah man. Well, like you're saying, man, like it's, it's there, the there's, game. There's, there's there's no other way out. Like that's the way, and that's why you get that passion and that love and that just like you know. Oh, it's Robbie. Robbie Cano, hey, bro. How good was Robbie Cano, bro? Let's be honest. So I was good. I was saying out of all the guys, and, and you can speak to this. Out of all the guys on that team, I was like, his play discipline was just. Bananas, oh. dude. Like he would make a guy throw fifteen pitches in in a at bat. Like you know what I mean? Oh, and just bro, get that pitch mad. count up. Hey, I got to hit in front of him. I got to hit behind him. I got to do early work with him. I got to see him go about his business every day. There's a oh, reason why that man got a two hundred fifty million dollar contract. Yeah. I just I just wish it could have been with the Yankees, man. Because I just <laughs> For real, here. We, we all did. did. Like, we like, all I did. want to see him continue to grow here because at the end of the day, man, like he he could have been the next captain. Right? He, he could have yeah. hit somebody like that, yeah. you, know? you know? It's funny, because when that whole thing was happening, I was saying, I was like, this guy is next in line. Because after yeah. Jeter yes. retired, yes. he's like, he's the face of the, he's the, face of the team. Yeah. You he's know what lovable. I mean? And, and li likable guy, you know, mm -hmm. like you said, always smiling. Like, yes. he had the same kind of, like, energy that you had. You know what I mean? He's yeah. like, fun guy. But when he's in the box, he's in the box. Seriously. Yeah. You know I mean? Totally. Well, by the way, at the end of the day, he, he knew what he was doing, right? And I think he was also just that much better than everybody else. 
Because if you remember, man, Robbie used to catch some flack for kind of being like lazy a little bit or like didn't yeah. hustle. Well, oh, he didn't hustle that the first. better than everybody else, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it was that much easier to him, you know? So he signs that big contract, goes to Seattle, kind of vanishes for a little bit. But now to see him back in the Big Apple, obviously not the Mets. Mets. Yeah. Mets. It's yeah. nice to see him back in New York. Yeah. That place loves him, man. He earned his mm -hmm. stripes there. And to see him yep. come back and to still, you know, kind of like still feel the energy of the city, yep. man. Like that's yeah. the thing I love the most. And that's the thing I miss most about New York City is just being there, feeling that energy that people put yeah. off there, you know? So for him to be back yep. there and to help the Mets doing their part, man, like, hey, they could have a squad, man. Hey, and, and if A-Rod and J-Lo go over there and buy that team, bro, you know they're going to bring everybody over there. They're, oh, they're going to hook it up. Yeah. They're oh, not, they're man. Not, they're not going to whoop on it. They're going to spend some money. <laughs> they're going to spend some cheese, bro. Ain't no yeah, like, like that, make it rain in there. Free. <laughs> but yeah, even when even when Yankees fan, when Yankees come back, even if they go to the Mets, it's still like you know what? It's close enough for me. It's close enough. Yeah. For, you still oh yeah, back, hey, back, like I, said, I, I, I got all the love in the world. I mean, when we were playing, I didn't feel that way. But now that I'm right. done, hey, I love the Mets, bro. I love mm -hmm. the Mets too. You know, <laughs> I see you Curtis this point, you know. See Curtis Grandison come back over there, you know that yeah. kind of thing. You know. Hey man, by the way, see Grant's been doing a great job on social media too. I don't know if y'all been y'all following the stuff. He even read books to the kids and stuff. Like, oh yeah. He's, well, he's always man, been he's a great such, dude. He yeah, is, man. He's such dude. a great ambassador for the game of baseball, mm -hmm. man. Like, he's just a good human being, and we yeah. need more of those guys, man. We really do. Like, guys Definitely. that ain't scared to step out and, and just do nice things for people. Yeah, right. And C. Graham was one of them guys. I mean, come on, man. He was. He, I felt like every other weekend he was hanging out with the Obamas, bro. Like, doing yeah. something. Yeah. I mean, he like, was out there, man. Doing, it, doing his thing, you know? That's a true story, man. Look at this. Three for five. Two for five. Two, runs, two runs, doubles. Two doubles. <laughs> so what it, that's, a week, after, that's a week for most people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are on the road after a big game like this. What do you, yeah. do you guys go out to eat together or is it just do your own yeah, thing? Yeah, I think that, that, that in itself, that is such an emotional win for a locker room. It's just yeah. like after that, it's just like you can't stop talking about it. And right. those are the type of games that I think that it's – it's almost like a brawl in a sense. And I'm not saying that brawls are a good thing, but brawls bring teams together more than We know teams. what you mean, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you're sitting there, you're talking, you're like, hey man, you see me, bro, when I got that guy or this guy? That, yeah. That's the same thing that was happening in the locker room after that game. Be like, man, can you believe that, bro? We were down nine nothing to the Boston Red Sox and they were good. And we mm -hmm. came back and won that game. That almost just like ripped all the chains off to let you know that you can do almost anything. Yeah, nice. Man. Not only did you beat him, you clobbered him. It's 15 <laughs> And at you didn't home, win nine, that makes you even win, better. You didn't win nine, 10 to 9. You win. I know. I know. That's the <laughs> thing. And it wasn't like a nail biter at the end. You know what I'm saying? It was no. like yeah. no. And that's the wild thing, too, is Tech said. He's like, man, he's like, that's the thing, that's the thing about the game is like, you, you're never out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like he's yeah. and he said he was like once we got to the and Cece said it too. He's like once we got to the bullpen, anything could happen. We knew yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, man. It's like that. It's that never quit, that never die attitude. Not every, not every team has that. And you just, it, it's, it's just something that is just within the organization. The fight, the, yeah. the just the, the grit, like the, the not be scared to just like do whatever you have to do to get that W. You know, mm. and for us, man, it was just kind of like the four years I was there, bro. That was the mentality: do whatever we had to do to win. Because yep. Derek Jeter be preaching around the locker room all day long. We played to win the game. We play yep. to win the game. It's not an individualistic thing. It's not about the numbers. It's about winning baseball games, man. And it's funny because I know him and MJ are tight, but like they are so similar, bro. Derek yeah. Jeter's strive for greatness was the same as Michael Jordan. It was crazy, man. Even the, the way they wore their ties and stuff, the mm -hmm. same thing. Bro, I'm like, man, <laughs> They were saying on ESPN, they said it's a shame that they didn't have a film crew following the Yankees the way they had a film crew following Jordan for this documentary because it was just like any of those years would have been an amazing oh, oh, behind man. the scenes Even story. just to have, even just to have. Just mm -hmm. to give to people, right? It's kind of yeah, like, yeah, man. I don't know. I think MJ smart, bro. There's a lot of LeBron talking. And then all of a sudden, bro, Corona hits. And then MJ, he's back on top, bro. <laughs> <laughs> back on top, bro. Remember <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah. All the kids are like, hey, that's that guy from the memes. And he's like, I'm yeah, more than that, baby. Right. Yeah. Hey, that's that that's guy the guy all the time, bro. That's I know that guy. guy. <laughs> he was a basketball player? <laughs>
even the Nike contract he had, bro. They were trying to spend like sell like three million dollars in like the first like four years. Drop like one hundred twenty five million year one. How bad do you how bad do you think Adidas feels watching this documentary where he's they turn to him. He's like, yeah, I really wanted to go to Adidas. Like, That's what he said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what he, said. Bro. Bro. he had it. If I'm not mistaken, I think he had Adidas when he was in North Carolina. Right. If I'm not that mistaken, the, I think he had That was the team. Yeah, that was the team. Yep. Wow. And he wanted to sign there because because Magic had Magic signed there, Bird was signed there. That was like yeah. the show. That also, was the team. They were saying that he wasn't a big enough name at the time to join the Converse crew. By the way, wow. I mean Nike, bro, yeah. to take it, take a flyer on somebody like that. I mean, at the end of the day, bro, it couldn't have been that much of a flyer, bro. Right <laughs> they, knew, there, bro. they knew what they had, yeah. Jeez, That's what they like. They like LeBron up too. No they doubt. LeBron, and by the way, they want a lifetime deal. <laughs> and by the way, them J one still the hottest shoe out there. Right? Still hot. Still, still hot. It's, it's still trouble. It troubled me. It troubled me to watch him play in them because they are not comfortable to play back basketball no, in. No way, but bro. They I they're comfortable. I think Clint Frazier trying to pop a few of them last year, bro. I'm like, man, your feet are bro. killing you, bro. Bro, I've been on his Instagram page because I some of the sneakers he's turning the cleats. I'm like, bro, your feet are gonna hurt. Like, oh, bro, he turned them Travis Scotts, bro, into spikes. I was like, bro, that's a shame. That's a shame. That was that was. <laughs> The sneaker heart, the sneaker head of me was, I was like, this is outrageous and sacrilegious. The Yankee fan was like, yeah, Clint, let's go. Yeah, look, at yeah, look at the drip. Look at the drip. <laughs> totally, man. Totally, bro. Oh, he, he man. Did, he, did the, he did the cause for Clint, too, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. was. A, well, I think that was a general, metal man. See, I, see, I think that's what we're losing out in baseball, right? Like, you could be putting out some swaggy spikes, bro, and uh -huh. selling, right? Just like yeah. they do in basketball, right? Yeah. Hand them spikes out to kids. Get them kids like on the neck. Like, you're trying to tell me Aaron Judge ain't got his own shoe yet. Come on, bro. Right. Like the AJ 99s would be nasty, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Every kid in the, in the Bronx be buying them shoes right now, you know? Yep. That's I feel like we're missing the boat on all of our swag in baseball. It's not up to date. We're not doing a good enough job because we're losing right. a lot of that, man. It's basketball and football. We're, we're bringing them it boys back. After we're the game, it back. Taking their jerseys off and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You don't see that mm -hmm. on the baseball field anymore. Oh. Jared Salamaka, 15 9. Oof. Mm -mm -mm. You hate to see it. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, if you were up by nine and now it's 15 9 and there's two, uh, three outs left, like, uh -huh. in theory, <laughs> you could come back, but you no, know, it's been a very, it's been a very <laughs> long your game. Window, your window starts closing, bro. Closing. <laughs> Yeah, the ninth oh, inning is man. the ninth inning is with for really like the first time you start going. I got three outs left. You're like, no, we got uh, we got nine about nine strikes. You start yeah, thinking totally, like that. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, come on now, for Yankee fans, how spoiled have they been shutting down games for the last decade, bro? Yeah, the greatest closer of all time, and then you uh -huh. bring the nice. Chapman in on the back end of that. Jeez, mm -hmm. man, you, and you had Dylan spoiled. Batanz, there's Andrew Miller right there. David Robertson at the time, yep. bro. David Robinson, I mean, Harry Yankees Houdini. Nasty yeah, the man. Yes. Nasty. That bullpen. Ooh. Was serious, I remember with David man. Robinson, like sometimes they'd bring him in and it'd be bases loaded, no outs. And yeah, he, that, that's where he got out of it. Houdini, right? Yes, and yeah. he would, he would get out of it. Hey, Joe Girardi, bro, anytime there was something going on in the game, you know he was dialing it up, bringing Houdini. Bring him in. Yeah, bring, I mean, Houdini. Right now, bring him in. You know? The base is a juice. Bring in Houdini. And sometimes you see David, you see David Robinson's face when he comes in. He's just like, yo, fam. This yeah, three play. Real. You're doing this to me again? Again? And then he get out of it and he'd be like, ah, no sweat. But it was like, yo, I, yeah, I got this. No bro. sweat. I got this, man. Oh. Yeah, that's man. true. Man. You know, it's just kind of crazy. It's like you get no, you you have to have those certain guys that just have that, right? There's a lot of mm -hmm. X factors that going into winning the championship. I mean, come on, baby. I mean, at the end of the day, 2009, I think we played 211 games, including spring training, regular season, and postseason. 211 that's games. That's, that's crazy time. That is a grind, man. That's a I'm serious interested to grind, see what man. these guys are going to do with the season moving forward. I've heard a lot of stuff about June spring training, firing it up in July. It's going to be interesting, man, because I yeah, think, you know. We'll see. Yeah, we, we, we got we to gotta protect those guys, but we also need them for some entertainment, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we need something, you know? Definitely. It's just on pause right now because when it, when we're, everything's back, you know, we're coming back. And I think this break probably makes people realize, you know, there's, I think people now, the same people who last year, if a game was on, they were like, ah, you know, it's a Tuesday night game. I'll catch something. I'll watch on Saturday. Now people are not going to take it for granted. 
Bro, that would be like, you know what? Hey, Each hey. one of these games counts. Each one of these games matters. Watch your day games hey, at work. Hey. Yeah, dude, you're so right, bro. Because I think nowadays, I think people are really realizing, like, I can't wait. Right? Yeah. Like, I can't wait like I used to. Because mm -hmm. nowadays, it's even like, hey, man, if you didn't have any toilet paper when this thing hit, you was in trouble. Like, you yeah. better go get in the sink or something because like, you was in trouble. So now I think, like, you know, I also think people are going to really realize it, man. Like, sometimes it's nice to take a little time off. Sometimes it's nice to kind of step back from things for a little bit and just kind of re realize how how good or, or, or whatever you have it, you know? Like, I think people yeah. might take a little more vacations now. I think these Zoom things are amazing, man, because you can get yeah. people together from all over the world. I think that's yeah. an amazing thing, man. I've had so much fun to be a part of all these because, come on, man, I mean, I wouldn't be able to see y'all and hang out with y'all unless I was in the flesh before, you know? Right. So yeah. now it's like we can do sort of things like this and just like I'm saying, Bring smiles to people's faces, man, and, and yeah. let people know that man, there's a there's a brighter side of things. There is. Unless you're a Red Sox fan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we oh, apologize. Today. Today. <laughs> Ball game over. Yankees win. The oh, Yankees, Yankees win. win. <laughs> Gotta play us. Stop spreading the news. I'll leave it today. <laughs> and now you get to go on the four train and be jerks and be like, let's go Yankees. That's right. That's right, bro. You let them know. Oh. You let them know. Let it eat. So good. So, yo, give it Swish, up for Nick man. Fisher. Oh, you guys are amazing, man. Thank, thank you, you bro. for blessing us and sitting down and watching this with us. And we're going to hit you up again and do this again. And oh, when this is all over, we got to meet in flesh and hang out and kick it, bro. Oh, gee, I'd love that, Meryl. I'm down for that, boys. I yo, love let's that. Do Anytime it, you need me, man, I'm there. There you go. Listen. I think you want me to parlay on this game, so we definitely, I got to dap you up in real life. You owe me, bro. You owe me. <laughs> yo, yo, Nick, stay safe, my guy. All right, man, y'all too, man. Stay safe, fellas. Peace out, y'all. Peace. Yep. Ah, a Yankees won, 15 yeah. to 9. Yeah, yeah baby. A, Yan a Yankee yeah. spanking. Yeah. First time, long time. All right. A good one. Shout out to our special guest, CeCe Sabathia, the yes, God. Yes, sir. Mark Big Mark Tashara. And Nick Swisher. Nick Swisher, the Swisher right. of all. Shout out to MOB and Yes for hooking this up, letting us rock this. A little footage from Sport, Fox Sports. Shout out to Ken Rosenthal. Uh, you know what I mean? David Ortiz. David uh, Ortiz. Shout out to... Uh, Jared. Uh, Saka, laka, laka. Saka, 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 Laka, Saka, Laka, 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 Laka. You know what I'm saying? Clay Rapata. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Girardi, Yo, Derek Jeter. Joe, you know what I'm saying? Everybody. The whole Everybody. squad. The Steinbrenner. The whole oh, and special, special honor to the boss, George Steinbrenner. That's right. My guy. My guy. Thank you. Thank you, you did it. You did it. For us. For us. <laughs> for, for the Bronx. <laughs> He's like, who are those two? Who are those? <laughs> who are those? I don't know those guys. The one on the lower half of the screen has way too much facial hair. Hank, get him to shave it. <laughs> oh. yeah. You know the time. You know the vibes. You know, you, it's your boys. This is tomorrow. You know what I mean? Number one show on late night show time. This is tomorrow, 11 o'clock. You know, just check it out. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully, you know we get to do more. And if we don't, oh, yeah. um, we'll just FaceTime you guys when we're drunk and we'll just do it like uh, CC. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, MLB, uh, if you're listening, this is a really great way to swag out the league, so. <laughs>